97. It kept the wind. It went off of Shevin Wiggins' foot. Went off of Shevin Wiggins' foot. Davison hauled it in and kept the hopes alive to win a national championship, which Nebraska ultimately did. And Daniels' pass thrown and almost intercepted off the deflection. He was looking for Tommy Saunders on the play. Nebraska had it defended well and already a little bit of jawing made a from uh, the Nebraska defense. The, the black shirts, the way they've played lately, maybe more of a pastel, something less threatening. Well, they need to get jacked up for this game. They haven't played very well defensively. They're giving up 409 yards per game, and this really isn't the black shirts. Kevin Crossgrove, their defensive coordinator, needs to keep this team pumped up, keep them in this game mentally. They need to get stops early in this game to get the momentum. Third down and short, and Daniels' pass is complete. To who else? Martin Rucker, pickup of nearly 10, gets it out close to the 35-yard line. And a nice job of operating the offense. Chase Daniels is going to go to his tight ends. He feels comfortable with his tight ends. When you've got tight ends that can catch the football, go to them early and often. It's a mismatch when you've got a guy that's six foot five, 250 pounds plus that can catch the ball and make plays, good hands, and move the chains. Just underway from Columbia, Nebraska and Missouri, Ron Franklin and Ed Cunningham will have the call for you just as soon as our audio problems are resolved. In the meantime, Reese Davis along with Mark May and Lou Holtz as Missouri ranked 17th in the country, getting things started in a direct snap. A little ripoff of the Arkansas formation, a little wild hog, Jeremy Macklin. He's a redshirt freshman and a hybrid guy who's done a lot of different things for Gary Pinkle's offense so far. He takes a direct snap, has a good game there. There's our friend Jack Aroot sporting his goatee. And again, the reason you don't hear Jack's because we're trying to fix our audio issues. Mm -hmm. and, and it's nice. You see that Wildcat formation. Just about every team's incorporating that. If you've got athletes on the offensive side of the ball that can catch and run the football, every team's going to put that in their offense. Second down and one. Daniel now back taking the snaps and Daniel hitting his other tight end, Chase Kaufman, and there's nothing there for Kaufman, Lou. No, but you see a distinct difference between the two offensive philosophies. Nebraska's quarterback's predominantly a thrower. Chase Daniels is more of a single wing triple threat. Daniels fifth in the country in total offense, over 350 yards per game, and a very efficient passer as well. Number 23 in passing efficiency so far this season. Third down and one. After the direct snap to Macklin picked up nine, nothing on the completion following, and Daniel's going to try to throw for the single yard, and he wants a lot more than one, and he's got it. Missouri keeps the drive alive, and Macklin, who took the direct snap, makes a reception from Daniel. And the freshman's doing it all. He can do it with punt returns, kickoff returns, catching the ball, running the ball of the backfield. But this is a big play. When it's third and one, the defense thinks you're going to run the football. What happens here? Spread them out a little bit, take big splits by the offensive line. You look at the defense of Nebraska. They think it's going to be a run. Good protection up front. It's just a simple pitch and catch. Snap it to the quarterback. He's going to take a step up the field, fake the handoff, and complete it to his back. Opening drive of the game for the Tigers, and they've moved in to Nebraska territory. And another completion to Chase Kaufman. Gets down to about the 25-yard line. I hear in my ear the dulcet tones of Ron Franklin right now as we continue to work on our audio issues from Columbia. Chase Daniel, the completion, again, working the tight ends. And the athletic tight ends make a little bit of a difficult matchup for any defense. I'm told that we have our audio issues resolved. Ron and Ed ready to call the game with Missouri on the move. Welcome for those of you who are just now joining us for tonight's ball game. Missouri won the toss and they have elected to receive and they've moved the ball from their 20 yard line. This time with the completed pass just inside the 20 yard line of Nebraska. And if you don't know too much about these teams, both of them searching for identities of defense. And right away we're seeing exactly what we expected to see. Missouri taking it right down the field on their first drive. Daniel. Under pressure, gets away, looks over the middle at the five-yard line, caught by Rucker. It'll be first and goal for the Missouri Tigers, and coming up will be the tenth play of the drive. Octavian was the man applying the pressure for the Cornhuskers, but he could not get there in time. And this is exactly why Martin Rucker has improved his stock so much. He Put his name into the NFL to see where he would be drafted. It came back fifth round. He said he was offended by that, but it's these types of hands. Great catch spinning behind him to make that catch that are going to raise his stock significantly in this year's draft. Well, this is a pistol formation. Daniel's going to keep it. He's not going to score. 
He turned and faked it to Tony Temple, the tailback, but very well schooled defensively were the Cornhuskers. They stayed home. And that's the difficulty of defending this offense. Not only do they spread you out, and you look at Chase Daniel and don't think he's an athletic guy. This guy runs very well. He's averaging over four yards per carry, so they do have that wrinkle. And now with trips to his left, he can run well and to his left and throw. So I would think maybe he'll, he's going to sprint out towards that trip side. Rude made the tackle just a moment ago. 11th play of the drive now was they scrimmage with a second down and goal. Quick pass over the middle. Collision in the end zone, and here comes the flag. Jared Perry was the intended receiver, and I believe Marillo made contact with him. Well, they're just running a timing slant. It's unfortunate. Grigsby just defense, never moved. Number two on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. The referee tonight, obviously from the Big 12 Conference, John Bible. I think the mistake Grigsby made is he never found the ball. If he'd have found it and moved towards it, I don't believe that they would have called pass interference. I think you're right. Pass intended for William Franklin, another big play guy. So a new set of downs for the Tigers. And they continue that relentless pressure with no huddle. First down. First and goal. The handoff goes to Temple. Nice job by Nebraska. He's not going to get it into the end zone. But reminding you, a new set of downs with that interference call. We go back to last week for Nebraska. Their defense was on the field for 40 minutes and 102 plays against Iowa State. Wow. You're already starting to see guys with hands on their hips. That is the whole theory behind this Gary Pinkle and Dave Christensen offense. Wear out the defense. Do you think it does linger as long as a week afterwards? I do. I, you that It's hard to put into terms 102 plays. I never played that many when I was playing ball. That's staggering. Shotgun formation. They are empty in the backfield. Nebraska shows blitz. Daniel will run and he'll walk in. Touchdown, Tigers. It's six to nothing. Wolford to attempt the extra point, trying to make it 7 to nothing. It only took them four minutes and 45 seconds to take it down the field and score on an 80-yard drive. Wolford is perfect, so let's take a timeout. 7 to nothing, Missouri on top. And when we come back, Sam Keller and company will be on the field. Can they score as easily as the Tigers? So welcome back to Columbia, Missouri. Sold out house. The gold rush tonight. I don't know how many gold t-shirts we have here, but it is thousands. This is going to be fun because I'm not sure Nebraska can be stopped just like Missouri was not stopped. Well, we knew it was going to be a shootout. And Missouri takes over on defense now. They're 93rd in the country in total defense. So as bad as it's been for Nebraska, Missouri has had their cha uh, challenges as well. And I agree. I think Sam Keller is going to come out. They'll get Marlon Lucky going. I think he's going to be the key to the running game for Nebraska. Because I think they want to shorten this game a little bit, Rod. I don't know how much more they want to see Missouri out there. Yeah, well, I mean, and that makes a lot of sense. I think I would turn and hand it to Lucky a lot. That means that number 10 would be on the sideline. Daniel for Missouri. Here's the kick. It's very returnable. Coming down at the eight-yard line is Grixby. And Grixby, wow, he gets tagged as he makes it to the 30-yard li uh, line. And let's take a look at the Nebraska starters on offense. Here is Matt Davison. Starters for Nebraska's offense tonight. They'll be led by quarterback Sam Keller, who has to have a big game tonight for Nebraska to be successful down here in Columbia. Marlon Lucky will be behind him. He's having a big year at the running back position. And he'll be protected up front by an offensive line that averages 310 pounds and be led by right guard Matt Slauson at 6'5", 335 pounds. Okay, Matt Davison then. The famous snag catch of a ball that was booted by Nebraska as the flag goes down and the marker is going to be against the Cornhuskers which gives us an opportunity to take a look at the starters defensively for the Missouri Tigers.
And here they are on that defensive front. Lorenzo Williams, a senior out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. Very active player. Was a linebacker, defensive end. He's a captain. The linebackers. Sean Weatherspoon, keep an eye on number 12. Spoon is all over the place. And in the secondary, his real name is Cornelius, but he goes by Pig. He had a 100-yard fumble return against Illinois in a victory over the Fighting Illini earlier. First pass, it's complete, and that's Purify, and he'll take it out to about the 28-yard line. Well, Maurice Purify, there was questions about whether he was going to play or not. His girlfriend was killed in a one-car accident last weekend, decided to stay with the team. It's been a very difficult few months for Maurice. He lost a brother this summer, was suspended for part of the summer for two off-the-field incidents. But this is a young man that Nebraska in this West Coast offense has to have. 6'4", 220, very explosive receiver. Lucky the tailback, but they go play action. And they throw it to Lucky. Oh, my goodness, what a hit by William Moore. Hello, number one. Well, Matt Eberflus, the defensive coordinator from Missouri, told us this is a next level guy. 6'1, 220 pounds, just broke on that ball perfectly. Here is tonight's X Factor. It's presented by Dell. Well, we just talked about it a moment ago. For Nebraska, I feel like they need to shorten the game slightly by running the ball. And for Missouri, just weather the storm. Live up to this great atmosphere. Keller throws far sideline well overthrown and it'll be one two three and out little bit of a shaky start for the quarterback and the Cornhusker offense well it was Missouri handling the spotlight they came out lights out on defense running around flying hitting people this is the biggest game for everybody in the Missouri program right now no question and for Nebraska I really think they, don't, they got behind the sticks because of that penalty, so yes. they had to throw. But in a normal down and distance situation, they're going to have to get lucky into the game to try to keep Chase Daniel off the field. Dan Chichner comes onto the field to punt it away for Nebraska. Macklin, the deep man for the Tigers. Low boot. And Macklin driven back to the 23. Gets one block. Here comes a flag. He may take this the distance, and it's not going to count because it's going to come way back because of an illegal block. Titchener is a man who made the tackle for the Cornhuskers. They're going to get Luke Lambert. Illegal block in the back, number 40 on the return team. That's a 10-yard penalty, first down. Check that. They're calling Andrew Gatchker. And that is the right call. That's not only a block in the back, but it's a hold. You could have thrown it twice going against Bo Rude, who's a starting linebacker down covering. Well, the first drive started just as Missouri drew it up. Chase Daniel on the money to Rucker. And these Missouri receivers showing all of them have shown great hands so far tonight. And then just a really easy zone blocking scheme. Chase Daniel, who you don't expect to run it. He's solo in the backfield, but you have to account for him in the run game. And the interesting thing is the design, as you look at the 80 yards, 12 plays, 445, is the superstars, the speed guys, are the ones that they incorporate on every one of these early plays, as this running play is not going to go anywhere. The Cornhuskers right there to stop it for a two-yard loss. It's interesting talking to Gary Pinkle. Gary was the offensive coordinator at the University of Washington when I was there. Guys like Chris Chandler, Mark Brunel, Napoleon Kaufman, guys like that were coming through. And Gary Pinkle said this is the best collection of offensive talent he's ever been around. I was interested when he said that yesterday. Unreal. Yeah. By the way, the 445 time elapsed is the second longest drive that they've had this year. To tell you how quickly they strike. Daniel, complete 25. Fighting forward to the 28 yard line is Jeremy Macklin. Now, I talked about getting the Supers involved. I'm talking about Franklin, Macklin, Denario Alexander is back, Temple, Rucker, and Kaufman. And watch, talk about getting guys involved. Watch the progression of Chase Daniel. One, nothing there. Two, coming right back to it. He looked at three different people. He even took a quick peek. Over there at Williams, and he wasn't there, so he came down. And he's just so calm in the pocket. Of course, great protection always helps that. Denario Alexander, 
into the ball game. First time we've seen him tonight at the lower part of your screen. And a flag comes down. And that will be a movement against snap, ball start 79 offense. Five yards Tyler Llewellyn, the left offensive tackle move. By the way, folks, with the hurry up offense, Missouri does not have a delay of game penalty this entire year. That, that's hard to believe. Second best in the country in penalties. They've only had 117 yards uh, of penalties against them in four ball games. Amazing. So now third down and longer. They need to take it out to the 31 yard line. Nebraska shows blitz. And they stay at home. They bring three down line, but actually throw it in the flat. Got it complete. And that's Saunders, number 84, the junior out of Kearney, Missouri, will have the first down. Tell me, sir, how in the world do you stop this offense, and particularly with the quick? Fire stuff it uh, and you got Kaufman running here and just sitting right behind that It, it just the design it, everything you see is different on every play Dave Christensen the offense coordinator actually scripts the entire game now He'll go back a few times 58 plays. He draws up none of them will, will look the same They might be the same play, but they'll be out of a different formation Nebraska showing blitz again, and they bring five. They go with a running play, though, when it's Macklin, and Macklin will take it up the sideline close to another first down. Forced out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Macklin is one of those young men that they expected great things out of last year when they brought him in as a true freshman, and unfortunately, during summer works out workouts, blew out his knee. So he had to sit. He is the best in the country, all purpose yards, rushing, receiving, punt return, kickoff return. He's the only guy in the country with over 100 yards in each one of those. Well, Tony Temple joins his quarterback, Chase Daniel, in the backfield. And they go option. And Daniel holds on to it. He'll have the first down. He goes across midfield and into Nebraska territory. Kevin Dixon on the stop for Nebraska. Again, you go back to Chase Daniel in high school, South Lake Carroll High School. He had over 1,400 rushing yards his senior year. He tore it up, obviously, passing and Todd Dodge's spread offense there, but it, you, you wouldn't expect him to be running the option out of the shotgun. You, you'd think of him more as a pocket guy. So hard to get ready for him. Four wide receivers and a timeout has been called by Missouri, so we'll, so we'll stay here. Seven and nothing, Tigers on top. And I don't think anybody is surprised by what we have seen so far in this ball game. Ed. Well, we sat down with Dave Christensen yesterday, the offensive coordinator for Missouri, and, and he actually pulled out his script of plays. We asked him about calling plays, and people always talk about, oh, it's an art, you've got to know this. He literally draws up 58 plays, and it's just right hash or left hash, how do I call it? And he goes right through it. If Nebraska comes out in a in a coverage they didn't expect and he knows it'll take away 10 of those plays or just scratch them off and then they'll go back into halftime. They may dial one up from earlier that worked, but none of those 58 plays are the same. It's Dave on the far right right there. He's got that script there and he just literally goes right down through it. And let's go down to the sideline Jack Aruk. We were having some fun at Dave Christensen's expense, guys, because you know at the present time here in Missouri, it is now approximately 42 minutes beyond Dave's bedtime. <laughs> he told us that he would have a Red Bull in the refrigerator and he would consume it two hours before the game. Well, flea flicker, fake the double reverse, deep over the middle, ball is caught at the 22-yard line by guess who? Martin Rucker. These two tight ends are both 6 6, and it makes it extremely difficult to cover and also go up and take the ball away from them. 26 yards. Three vertical routes on a double reverse pass. You just don't see that. That is so hard to do. It was covered. Nebraska did everything they, they could. They did. Absolutely. They were there. This time, a three man rush by the Huskers. Quarterback keeper, Daniel, to the 15. Brandenburg, Lance making his second tackle of the night here in this early going as we go under six minutes in this first quarter. You know, when we sat down with Tony Temple, the running back, 
yesterday. He brought in all the offensive linemen. <laughs> and I was asking him about this offense. I said, how do you learn it? There's so many different things. That's the beauty of this system. They have six blocking schemes. So the big guys up front don't have to think a lot. All they have to do is get on their man. Alexander back in the ball game. Number 81. But they look to the far sideline, and that's Jared Perry. Pass intended for him, and it goes incomplete. Nice job defensively. Bowman was the man who got a hand on it. Well, Missouri, one of only three schools in the country that is averaging over 300 yards passing and 200 yards rushing, the other two being Kansas and Louisville coming into today. But they will balance it up. That 58 play script has balance built into it, run and pass. Third down. They need the 12. Daniel throws it complete. There's Jared Perry. Beg your pardon, Franklin. William Franklin, number two. The receivers from Missouri all do an excellent job of catching the ball away from their body. It's something that all receivers work on, but you have to have the hands to do it, and we've seen all of them do it, and that's so key for yards after catch. Keeps your feet moving. You don't leave your feet to catch the ball when you go to cradle it. Derek Washington, the freshman running back into the ball game, his red shirt taken off. They hand it off to him, turns the corner inside the five. Does he step out of bounds? No, yes. Thought he did at the six-yard line. He walked it on in the end zone and threw the crowd. But they said, nope, I don't believe so. It's going to be out of bounds at the sixth. Dillard was the man who was over there to make the play. Well, when they take your red shirt off, you better be ready to do everything. Derek Washington was going to throw that into the end zone. That was a halfback pass that was well covered by Nebraska. And Washington did a nice job of just tucking it and almost taking it the distance. Tony Temple comes back into the lineup at tailback. This is the 11th play of the drive for Missouri. Faked it to the right over the middle. Touchdown like stealing from a baby. Chase Kaufman. These tight ends are giving him fits. say to your guys if you're, if you're Bill Callahan right now this is just an absolute clinic that they are seeing by Chase Daniel you cannot throw that ball better to Kaufman there was a linebacker and a safety that he had to throw it over and it was perfectly thrown Wolford with the extra point attempt he's got it 14 to nothing just under five minutes to play in the first quarter and we'll hold it right here now let's take that a little further for starters a stutter with that opening penalty by Nebraska, and it's amazing what a stumble right out of the box can do to you. Well, and you're, what a great move by Kaufman. Just absolutely throws Larry Asante, the safety, and that, that fake. And we were talking about how many plays Nebraska was on the field against Iowa State. 23 so far, with 4.57 to go in the first quarter. Boy, you, you, they're going to start wearing them out, and, and we're right at the beginning of this ball game. And let's go down to Jack Aroot. Ron, we were talking to a lot of the players yesterday. The one thing they talked about is that in spring ball, they had already circled October 6th. They already knew it was the beginning of the Big 12 conference play. And the seniors had to get together, if you recall, and they shared with us the fact that they tried to explain to their fellow players, don't look ahead that far. We certainly learned that one week ago. They talked about playing in the moment, being somewhat existential. But when it came to October 6th, they were ready. You got the sense yesterday that they wanted to tee it up yesterday and get it on. Okay, Jack, a really good friend. I'm, we don't have time to talk to him right now, but Norm Stewart, the former head basketball coach here at Missouri, kind enough to stick his head in the booth and say hi and tell everybody hello and go Tigers. Here's Grixby. 25, 30. And is finally going to be tackled out at the 37-yard line. Nice situation, and now, you know, I think Nebraska's got to just take their eye off the scoreboard, forget all situations, do what you do. And it's exactly like last week against Iowa State. Grixby had a 51-yard kickoff return that almost went the distance when they were down 10 to nothing. So he gave them the momentum back there. And I'm, I'm right with you. 
Sam Keller needs to settle in to score 0 0. Let's start this thing over again. Rolls the pocket, throws it to the H back, and that's Sean Hill. And Hill will have the first down as he'll take it across the 50 down to the 48 yard line. Tomorrow night at ESPN, Chase Holbrook and New Mexico State start conference play as they beat Ian Johnson and the Boise State Broncos who try to extend a 30 game conference home winning streak on the blue turf. ESPN football primetime, 8 o'clock Eastern, tomorrow evening. First down, number one for Nebraska. Missouri has nine. Missouri's opening drive, 11 plays, or 12 plays, and 11 on this one. Flag comes down. That's going to be a block in the back as Purify takes it down the sideline and is going to go all the way to the six-yard line, but I believe is going to come back. That would be a 42-yard gain, and you can see. 26 on the offense. 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, Dan Erickson was out there fighting away, trying to give Purify somewhere to run. And he just never let go of the guy he was blocking. It's hard sometimes, you don't know how close the runner is to you, and you've got to release the jersey working on number 19, Carl Geddes. And it was that left hand, he just never let it go, and he, he could have let it go. Welcome everybody, Ron Franklin, Ed Cunningham, Jack Aroo, coming to you from a jam-packed Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri. It is officially Gold Rush Night. Thousands of gold t-shirts have been handed out, and they are wearing them very proudly because their Tigers have jumped on top 14 to nothing in the first 11 minutes of the first quarter. There was a lot of hand. confusion. Oh, check that. They went timeout. They they did throw the flag, but they got the timeout before. So let's take a timeout. 3:51 left in this opening quarter. Tigers 14 to nothing. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by Mitsubishi Motors, driven to thrill. This was a great scene on Thursday night on campus here at Missouri as the students held a pep rally for the football team. They let them know. They said, hey, you guys come out and let us show you some love. And they did. And the football team is returning it tonight with some love of 14 points in the opening quarter. Keller hands it off to his eye back lucky and he is going to be hit and stop for a loss William Moore is the man who got there first let's go down to Jack Arood on the sideline Jack well a lot of people wondered how Bill Callahan was able to scoop up Sam Keller as quickly as he did and remember Bill told us that one of the reasons when he was at the Oakland Raiders he used to go to Friday night games because his son was playing quarterback well, one of the teams that they played against was Sam Keller's high school team. He was impressed from the get-go there, and when Keller became available, he scooped him right up. Okay, Jack, he scooped up a good one. Cody Glenn in the ball game at tailback. Keller throws to a safety valve, and he's uh, got it complete. 17 yards on the play. Well, what a difference a year makes for Sam Keller. And six. He was sitting in Dirk Cutter's office after a very strange turn of events where he was named the starter and then Rudy Carpenter was named the starter two days later and Sam decided to transfer and on August 20th 2006 Keller was in Cutter's office getting his release on August 20th 2007 he was named the starting quarterback for the University of Nebraska Swift with a good reply on a first down for the Huskers pitch back comes to lucky runs down the sideline shoved out of bounds as he goes inside the 25 to the 24 by Brock Christopher and lucky a very diverse back you're going to see him do a lot of different things in this offense 
He's one of the best receivers, if not the best receiver for Nebraska. Has great hands. They'll use him underneath in screens. Missouri has the Marshall Falk rule in effect tonight, which means you defend him like you used to have to defend Marshall Falk in the St. Louis Rams. If he's around the line of scrimmage, grab a hold of him. Even though it's holding it, usually doesn't get caught. Keller hands it off to Lucky. Right side takes it inside the 20. That's plenty for the first down. It'll be first and 10 Nebraska at the 17 as Sean Weatherspoon makes a defensive play. One of the real leaders, the most productive of the linebackers for the University of Missouri. Really, really good athlete. LSU wanted him badly, and he wound up wearing a Tiger uniform for Missouri. Nebraska doing exactly what we talked about at the start of this drive. Just flush the beginning of the game away. We've gotten into a nice little rhythm here. Lucky again. Nothing to the left, nothing in the middle. It'll be no game. Second down and 10 coming. Well, this play was blown up by Cornelius Pig Brown, the third. The strong safety is going to come off and smash the trap block. And Lucky just has nowhere to go. He absolutely stuffs the fullback, Thomas Lawson, into Lucky. That's an excellent job by a strong safety taking on a much bigger fullback. There's Pig right there. Had a good visit with him yesterday. He said, please don't call, call me Cornelius. And we said, okay, we'll make sure we don't, Pig. Quick out pass. Got an H back in front. That is Swift. And Swift will go inside the 10 to the 9. You gotta like what the offensive staff for Nebraska has done here. Just exactly what we talked about during the timeout after the second Missouri touchdown. Forget what has gone on so far. Do what you do best, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. And they've been excellent in the red zone. 17 touchdowns is a very high percentage of TDs to field goals. That, uh, that stat can be a little misleading sometimes, but they've been very efficient. Third down, they need to take it to the seven-yard line. Little play action, pressure. Keller throws for the end zone and throws it away. It'll be fourth down. Good decision by the senior. Ziggy Hood was the guy who was coming pell-mell and created the havoc, made him run it all the way to the sideline and then throw it away. Yeah, there was excellent coverage into the boundary for Missouri, and Sam Keller looked and looked and looked as long as he could, but did a nice job of just throwing that thing out of bounds. This is going to be a 26-yard attempt. Henry attempts the field goal, and he knocks it home. So let's take a timeout. The Cornhuskers are on the board. Alex Henry knocks it home. A redshirt freshman out of Omaha and a new score, 14 to three Missouri Tigers. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by American Express. Are you a card member? And ESPN Game Plan. See the most college football every Saturday. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. So we are back in Columbia, Missouri. Cornhuskers get on the scoreboard with 49 seconds showing in the opening quarter. 14 to 3, 9 plays, 53 yards, 408 is what they took off the clock. Gary Pinkle, his wall club offensively tonight has been virtually flawless. A 12 play drive and then an 11 play drive on their second possession. So that kick goes out of the back of the end zone. They will not be able to uh, return it. And again, the Tigers will scrimmage from their own 20 yard line. You know, I have to think Nebraska, Lucky is such a good football player. I think I would run him 30 times tonight. Two reasons. They're going to pick up yards, they're going to score. It also keeps the Tigers' offense off the field. It's almost unbelievable how efficient Missouri has been at the beginning of this game. We, we knew Chase Daniels was very good, we knew he was going to be accurate. I don't know that we thought. He could play this well on this big of a stage. This is the biggest game for a lot of people, for everyone in this program, quite frankly. And to come out and play the way he has has been staggering. Well, you're exactly right. And one of the things that Missouri has done since about the year 2000, they've had big games, but they have disappointed. 
in the big game. Daniel throws this one very high and uh, incomplete. Jack Aroot, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, that drive may have only lasted for four minutes and eight seconds, but they were precious four minutes and eight seconds for the Nebraska defense. While their offense got three points on the board, Coach Cosgrove was able to make some major adjustments in terms of the way they're going after this, this fastball offense that we're seeing from Missouri. But more importantly, Ron, what I noticed is a lot of the defensive players were getting stretched out, already beginning to show some cramps. Wow. It has cooled off, but it was a warm day here in Columbia. All over the country, for that matter, in this part of the world, as well as the South. High temperatures, pass, collision, flags, pass interference. And it looks like Bowman is going to be called for the pass interference. What an excellent throw by Chase Daniel. He saw that he had Chase Kaufman at six foot six over there against Zach Bowman. Now, Bowman. Now Bowman is 6 2 so he's he's a he's a tall corner excuse me that is yeah that is Zach Bowman excuse me yeah but under throw the ball it's it, one of two things is going to happen your guy's going to be able to make a play on it because he sees it first or the defensive back is going to run through him and you're going to get a, uh, a penalty what an excellent throw well when you've got two tight ends like Rucker and Kaufman who are 6 6 a piece even a 6 2 defensive back has got problems as far as coverage. Well, in, in this offense, that's where your tight ends line up. They're, they're not down in a three point stance. A little razzle dazzle here. Rucker does get that. As Daniel came out of the pocket and, and threw a pitch like you would on an option play. I mean, it was fairly long, but it was a very legal forward pass, and uh, Philip Dillard finally came over and made the tackle. You know, one of the things that Missouri has to do before every game is meet with the officials and go through what their formations are. They actually have a card that shows what the formations are, and that's him working with John Bible to say, listen, here's all of our formations that may look illegal, but they're not. They school up the officials before the game starts. By the way, that last play, it was a backward pass, so officially it goes as a rush rather than a completed forward pass. That's the end of the opening quarters. We change ends of the field. The Missouri Tigers, 14 to 3. We'll be right back. to three the Missouri Tigers and right now it looks as though that Nebraska is either going with either two down linemen or three everybody else is a linebacker or a defensive back to try to slow down this Tiger barrage on offense. Daniel vertical right over the middle in and out of the hands of his intended receiver and that is an unusual situation when you see Macklin drop the football. Let's go down again to Jack Aru. Jack. Remember, fellas, at the beginning of the game, I told you about the fastball offense that Missouri has been playing. Their goal to try and get each playoff without a huddle and do it with the clock going down to only 14 seconds to go in the play clock. I've been watching thus far. They have failed to do that thus far. They get it down to 11 seconds, and that's generally when the ball gets snapped. <laughs> okay, Jack. Are you going to admonish someone at halftime? He's great. Them, uh, he's giving them a minus on their scorecard for tomorrow. <laughs> oh, my. Three man rush again for the Huskers. Pass thrown into uh, coverage that time. Bowman was there on the cover, and it'll be incomplete. And for the first time tonight, the Missouri Tigers are going to have to punt. Well, you mentioned that they only had two defensive linemen in. That's because the, they put the speed rusher, Steve Octavian, who's actually a linebacker. Yes. So there's only two big bodies. Talking about adjustments, that's exactly what Kevin Cosgrove said that they may have to do is just get smaller and smaller people people on first stop of the game for Nebraska. Well, quickly to the line of scrimmage, and here is the boot. Cross it. Not real long, but very effective because it goes over the deep man's head. And let's see where they're going to step this one out. They step it out at the 19-yard line. 44 yards on the kick. 
Well, tomorrow night in ESPN, Chase Holbrook and the New Mexico State Aggies start conference play as they meet Ian Johnson and the Boise State Broncos, who will try to extend a 30 game home conference winning streak on the blue turf. College football primetime at ESPN tomorrow, 8 Eastern. And if you haven't had a chance to see Chase Holbrook, we actually called this game last year yeah, in Las Cruces. Las Cruces. And yeah. Chase Holbrook is a fantastic quarterback in Hal Mummy's offense. Fun to watch. No, here's Lucky. And just what we kind of suspected they might try to do, keep it on the ground, pick up some first downs, and run some clock to keep Missouri's offense off the field. And Lucky did everything he could, it looked like, to stay in bounds. Yeah. That's exactly what the Missouri coaches expected. Bill Callahan coming from the NFL. You see that a lot in the NFL. When a game's getting out of hand and you want to start shortening a little bit, always work your running backs, get or receivers. When you're near the sideline, fight to stay in bounds. Gain of one, second down and nine. Keller out of the backfield. There's Lucky. Boy, does he absorb a shot right there. Defensively. The Tigers have done a really good job of uh, coming after the Nebraska ball carriers. Castine yeah, Bridges did a good job breaking on that, and they're watching Lucky because he's one of the best receivers for Nebraska. Now, if you're Missouri, look for a possible screen. Lucky, they have not run one, especially in the middle of the field. This might be that time. Cody Glenn in the ball game. As the eye back coming off an injury, he's in to block, and they throw it to an H back coming across the middle. Close to the first down is JB Phillips, and there is a flag down on the near side of the field. Well, I think he, Sean Hill, just told us what they had. It's a first mask. penalty on the defense number 86. That's five yards added to the end of the run. It's a first down. Well, it's Castine Bridges again on that side. It's first down anyway, so not a huge penalty. So with the catch and the penalty, it is first down. Nebraska at their own 37-yard line. Cody Glenn out of the backfield tried to sneak him out and hiding caught the ball no game and let's go back to the studio. All right Ron got a prime time pulse going you got Cincinnati on the doorstep against Rutgers down 10 on ESPN 2 Ohio State is blowing out Purdue in the third quarter some watching that on ABC. I got to tell you about USC and Stanford Stanford just converted a fourth and 20 with about a buck and a half to go. And if the ruling stands, they will have first and goal from the USC nine trying to win the game down six. Wow. <laughs> That's a double wow. wow. Deep drop. They set up a screen and he just throws it away. The flag is down and I think Carl Nix. Five. Yeah. It was interesting hearing that from Reese about USC with Stanford with a chance to win it. And sitting down with Gary Pinkle yesterday, he said, you know, my buddies always say, how do you do this job with all the stress and everything? And he's never really thought about it. Last weekend, they had a bye week. And after what happened with Texas going down and Oklahoma going down, five of the top ten teams going down, he said, I looked in the mirror and I asked myself, how do I do this job? <laughs> Pete Carroll may be asking himself that tonight. Following the penalty, the movement by Carl Nix. It is going to be second down. They need to take it out to the 47. Deep drop by Keller. Near sideline. Throws safety valve. And Peterson dropped it. Wow. Trying to run before he secured the football. Talking to Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator at Nebraska, they had a bunch of drops last week against Iowa State. And he said that's very uncharacteristic. But sometimes you see that once it gets in the mindset of your receivers and they start thinking too much, you see some more drops. And now you're at third and 15. And Missouri has not blitzed much tonight. I wonder if this isn't a time that Matt Eberflus, who likes to zone blitz, may bring a linebacker and drop out some defensive linemen. 
Brett Byford comes out over the football. The senior out of Hartsell, Alabama. Keller steps up, steps again, throws long, got a man there, overthrown, and we are going to have yeah, on an incomplete was, pass. Was there was a shot to the head. Yeah. Pig Brown. Pig Brown, and that is going to be a 15-yard penalty on what should have been a punting situation for the Missouri Tigers. Yeah, this is a cheap shot. This is an absolute cheap shot by Pig Brown. Watch him come right to his head with the forearm to purify his face. That absolutely should be a penalty, and not so sure that Pig Brown should not be ejected from the game. Well, this crew wasted very little time. About 13 on the defense. That's a 15-yard penalty. First down. And you see the back judge talking to Pig Brown and explaining to him, probably saying, again, son, and you're going to be watching from another location. That's going to be on the sideline. Well, we just said that Gary Pinkle's team is the second least penalized team in college football and they had a that was, it was out they were done it was third down you don't expect a captain pick Brown a senior captain to make a mistake like that so with the penalty first down Nebraska from their own 47 none on the end around they're going to wind up with a gain of very close to five yards on the play well, a lot of headgears coming off tonight with the hitting that's going yeah. on, everybody needs to, when they come on the field, batten it down a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the momentum sure has swung towards the white shirts. It, it looked early on in this game, and that big 15-yarder keeping this drive going, it looked early on in this game that it might be, it's a gold rush, but it looked like it might have been a whitewash, too. Nebraska has hung in there and getting a couple of breaks. Eighth play of the drive for the Cornhuskers. Short drop. Jumping up in front of Keller, he's going to have to run it. No sack, but he'll be close to the first down. And they're going to say his knee touched at the 45-yard line. Baston is the man who got up and caused him to have to step up. Well, with such a versatile back like Marlon Lucky in the game, Actually, Lucky now coming off, and they're bringing in the power back, Cody Glenn. But this may be one of those chances. Little play action. See if he can't hit something over the top. Third down. They need to take it. Two yards ahead. Short drop. Looking, looking. Here comes pressure. Keller throws the ball. Has it complete at the 38-yard line. It'll be good for the first down. And at this time, it was J.B. Phillips, another one of six H-backs that they list in the depth chart. And they're going to say incomplete pass now. Well, J.B. Phillips was out of bounds and then came back in to catch it. It's an incomplete mm -hmm. pass. In college football, if the receiver leaves the field, if anybody leaves the field of their own volition and then comes back in, they cannot be the first person to make a play on the ball. If he is pushed out, if Phillips had been forced out of bounds, he could have been the first to make the play, but a good call by the officials. So the discussion goes on on the sideline. You could see Sam Keller standing there saying, wait a minute, we threw it. He caught it, picked up the first down, and then they explained to him, nope, it is punting time. Second time that Nebraska will have had to kick. If you're ever watching a game and you see a referee throw his hat at a spot, it's because somebody has stepped out of bounds. Macklin is the deep man for the Missouri Tigers. He runs away from it, and this punt is going to go into the end zone. 45 yards and a kick, and we'll take a timeout. Ten minutes left in the second quarter. 14 to 7. As we come back, we'll get an opportunity to see more of this young man, Chase Daniel. This telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. Ron Franklin, Ed Cunningham, Jack Aroot coming to you from Columbia, Missouri. Chase Daniel back on the field and a quick pass in the flat. Got that one complete to Macklin, and Macklin is going to 
immediately pick up a first down with a blocker in front. And the blocker was tight end Chase Kaufman, number 45. Ball gets out so quickly. Kaufman on the outside is going to go get a nice cut block. Well, that was a nice adjustment by Kaufman because Courtney Gris Grigsby had made a uh, break on the ball. Kaufman took a shot at his inside leg and got him down. And with the ball being thrown behind the line of scrimmage, as we explain every week, or as you did so aptly last week in that K-State win over Texas, makes it all legal. Man wide open over the middle again, and this is Franklin. William Franklin takes it inside the 50 to the 48-yard line. That is a 20-yard gain, Jack Aroot. Well, Ron Ed was telling you earlier about the fact that Dave Christensen uses 58 scripted plays. Well, each and every game, he also adds 10 plays, 10 new plays that he calls deceptive to try and keep his players on their toes. But with a bye week, I asked him yesterday, how many deceptives do you have for in this game? We counted them up, 17. <laughs> Sunday night is his draw up the deceptives night. That's when he sits down and just starts dreaming stuff up. Now they roll the pocket. Daniel just dumps it off. 5, 10, 15, counted off at 20 yards. Tony Temple out of the backfield. And that will go down as a long gainer. The pass was about a three-yard <laughs> completion. But it is perfect because there was only one defender there. They made him commit through it complete. Uh, John Bible, the referee over there talking to the umpire. And now Chase Daniel's going to get involved with the conversation. Personal foul number 93 on the defense. Illegal hands to the face. That's a 15-yard penalty. First down. So let me through. say this about this crew. All right. Pig went for the head when he made his hit. Crowd didn't like it. 15 yards. But then on the other side, defensively, Nebraska with the shot to the head. And what these officials are trying to send a message, their supervisor, Walt, is here tonight. They're just trying to say, hey, we're looking out for safety. Absolutely. And you can't do it. Absolutely. And I wouldn't be surprised at some point, Ron, if they don't bring the coaches together and say one more, and I've got to start. The penalty is declined out. because the play yardage was more than the penalty yardage would have been. It's a first down. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to. You want to take the 15 when you have a long, quote unquote, pass play. Rucker goes behind the center. The quarterback is split out wide to the right side. He's almost on the Missouri bench. You can see Chase Daniel way out there. Rucker, the tight end slash wide receiver, they do this with him, and back with him is Macklin, the wide receiver. He fakes it to Macklin, carries the ball into the line of scrimmage, and mark that play off right there. <laughs> take it off the script. Yeah, take it off the script. I don't think they want to run that one again. As Zach Potter says, nope, you didn't fool anybody on this one, partner. <laughs> Not so deceptive, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was deceptive. Well, well there's Dave. It looks like he's scratching something <laughs> off of that script and saying, well, Maybe, maybe the next time he'll draw it up so that he actually hands it to Macklin. <laughs> I think he's got a little better chance in traffic. A little more familiar uh, <laughs> sight now. Number 10 goes behind the center in a shotgun formation. 12 seconds on the play clock, and they snap it. The ball is thrown complete at the 24-yard line, and that is Jason Ray. Reese, you have another update on SC I understand Ron I told you the Stanford converted a fourth and 20 on the drive now fourth and goal from the USC 10 inside a minute to go to beat a Pritchard upstairs and Mark Bradford catches it touchdown the fighting Harbaugh's 24 23 though and SC's got just under a minute to rally back Wow Good heavens. oh man after last this should have happened last weekend as crazy as it was Daniel Got it complete. This one as he continues to throw to different receivers. Denario Alexander, who was out with a broken wrist against after the Illinois game, is back and he makes the reception. You know, they were breaking down today on the preseason or the pre uh, game shows. Craig James and those fellows were talking about will there be an unbeaten team? I don't think there's going to. No, I don't think so either. I think Hawaii's going to get beat. They've got some tough games. They got Washington at the end of the season. I don't see an unbeaten team this year. Daniel, good pressure by Nebraska. Throws the ball, almost intercepted, and diving was Courtney Grigsby. Boy, he almost came away with one. 
It'll be a second down and 10. Let me say this could really be an ironic situation. Though. I think the one team that has got a real shot at it if they get those running backs healthy and they win tonight against Purdue. Oh, I was don't just be say surprised that. if Ohio State and I don't think it's sneaking through the back door. No. We've done them twice. They are a good football team and because of the youth they're going to get better and better. Yeah, and Ohio State's uh, we just got to report up 20 to nothing against Purdue. I'm right with you. That defense is spectacular. They are and they're deep at running back when they're healthy. Daniel throws it high but throws it complete to Rucker and Rucker fights his way from the eight in the vicinity of the seven and listen to the love the crowd is giving to Rucker for that second effort. Wow. Well when we met with Rucker yesterday and we asked him he, he was ready to go to the NFL last year and he put his name in and they'll tell you where you're projected it came back as fifth round and Martin said it was a shock it actually offended me. He watched some film of Jeremy Shockey and some other tight ends and he has had run after run after run like this where not one not two not three but sometimes four and five guys have to take him down. Nebraska shows blitz. Let's see if they stay at home. See if it's called off because Daniel now with an audible obviously and you could see the left tackle Llewellyn shift his position and it's going to go for a one maybe a two yard gain. That's McKeon. One of the middle linebackers when you go back talking about the Big Ten and Ohio State I agree with you has a great chance to go undefeated but the beginning of the season when Missouri played Illinois and won in a tough game a lot of people said oh Missouri may be overrated because nobody thought Illinois was going to be very good hey, and that that hello that win is looming larger and larger is it not absolutely what an excellent game today for Illinois knocking off Wisconsin stopping the nation's long, longest winning streak and I don't think that game was as close as the score they just outplayed them. Pitch back comes pressure hit behind the line of scrimmage and Tony Tipple knocked down by Bo Rood the guy who seems to be the big play artist that he's the guy that gets this Nebraska defense going and Tony Temple came up a little gimpy on that right leg I think Rood may have landed on his foot or ankle and now you've got that size with Kaufman and, and not just the tight ends you have Franklin at 6 2. You have Denario Alexander at 6-5. You can look for a fade to the outside. This is the 11th play of the drive by the Tigers. High pass pressure. Got a pass over the middle. Incomplete. Thrown very hard and very quick. But defensively, William Franklin had folks around him, and he could not secure it. I think it's going to be Dillard who knocked it away, wasn't it? Excellent break on the ball. Nice job getting that left hand inside of there. It was Marillo. And he didn't he didn't uh, run through the back. He just reached through. Excellent technique by Marillo. Wolford to attempt the field goal. It'll be placed out at the 13 yard line. So a 23 yard hit attempt from the near hash mark. He got it. So five minutes 28 seconds showing on the clock until halftime in our new score Missouri 17 and Nebraska three we'll take a break we'll be right back with more from Columbia. ESPN's college football prime time brought to you by Affleck ask about it at work and AT&T your world delivered. Whiteman Air Force Base located 90 miles west of Columbia, Missouri, and it houses some very special people. The 509th Bomb Wing is out there, and a little bit later on in the ball game, we're going to show you what is so very special about that base 90 miles to the west of here. They have uh, Tony Temple headed for the house. I, he came down funny when Bo Root tackled him from behind. I'm sure. Jack Arruda will update us, but that is not good for Missouri. He's up around 90 yards a game rushing. It is a part of this offense. And they need him uh, at full strength. Wolford to kick it off. Gets a foot into this one, and it is returnable from the four yard line. Grixby. Well, who just almost has his head taken off at the 23 yard line? 
Now let's join Reese Davis for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Reese. All right, Ron, and we'll start things up with the baseball playoffs. Eric Burns going yard. Diamondbacks beat the Cubs 5 to 1. They advance to the National League Championship Series. Rockies and Phils playing right now. Rockies trying to finish that series, and the Rockies and Phils are scoreless in the third inning. Stanford and USC, the last chance for John David Booty, and an upset for the ages for the Cardinal as Bo McNally picks off the pass. Jim Harbaugh's team wins it 24-23. Sports Center after the game, ESPN News. You can stay current with that. Okay, Reese, thanks so much. I, I'm surprised he didn't go looking for a band member to run over or something. Uh, incredible. Absolutely, absolutely incredible. You know, we had that game last weekend in Austin. Kansas State went down there and just really beat up Texas. I mean, that game wasn't very close. Kansas State scored on a kick return, a punt return, an intercept return, every other return you can think of. And five of the top ten lost. And now you have the number one team losing to Stanford. And, and listen, I saw Stanford play earlier this year. That, that wasn't a very good club I saw. Keller reverses and throws to a safety valve. That's the H-back Sean Hill. And Hill will take it across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Jack Aroot, you have more. I'm Tony Temple. They have taken him into the locker room, fellas. They say it is a right ankle. You can see he's favoring as it goes in. Here is the good news, though. What they're going to do is they're going to retape him, try to stabilize that ankle. I spoke to Tony as he went in. He told me he's coming back, guys. Okay. Well, I don't doubt that. The young man came into our meeting yesterday and brought the entire offensive line with him, saying these are the guys. They're not just following me around. They helped me a bunch. Keller under pressure dumps off a safety valve to Lucky and Lucky's going to have the first down. Marlon will take it to around the 38 yard line. Well Marlon went through a bit of a transformation this past offseason. He's from North Hollywood California. He was putting a lot of pressure on himself had some severe homesickness that he admitted to and he also decided when he came in to wear number 20. Everybody who knows Nebraska football knows that that's Johnny Rogers number and it was just a little too much and he decided to change numbers go to five of course he chose Reggie Bush's number but uh, in Nebraska a little less pressure with that number than number 20 on the chest. I would think so. Tiefel Tiller moves from the left side over to the right pressure on Keller ball is just a little bit too long at the 38 yard line and it's Hunter Tiefel Tiller that uh, just came into the ball game that they threw the pass to and he does pay the price watch as he gets the ball away. Well that was a nice job by the linebacker Van Alexander he had gotten cut block. You see when you go out to practice and it's a full speed full pet practice how many times do you see the linebackers working on when they get cut how fast do you get up. That's a drill you see over and over again and Alexander nice hustle play. Second down and 10 441 left until halftime. Missouri by two touchdowns. Keller gets away and gets a pass off. And it's going to go for a first down as Lucky stayed right there and helped his quarterback out. And it was more of a shuffle that he got the ball to him. And it's Pick Brown who made the tackle. Well, this should have been a sack. Chavis, I think, yeah. Savannah had him. Yeah, he just couldn't get away from. Lydon Murtha and what a heads up play by Keller and Keller when he came in was such a humble guy said hey I'll go down and do the scout team I'll do whatever I can he really won over his teammates he had a little baggage coming here yeah. people were wondering how he's going to react when he left Arizona State and it's plays like that that'll win his teammates over Keller gets the ball away has it complete at the 43 yard line France Hardy, the man who uh, made the catch, and Jack Aroop, you got more. Well, yeah, not only did he request from Bill Callahan that he go to the scout team, he won the hearts and minds of his fellow players, and they voted him scout team player of the year, Ed. And you know, that's pretty good. When he could have been up there with the ones and twos while he sat out the year, he says, no, I'm going to go down there. And then he gets scout team player of the year. Probably, of all the things he's ever won a will win, Jack, he probably will be prouder of that than Eddie. Pass over the middle and it is caught. Missouri thought they had an interception. Purify makes the reception on the ball though, and it's good for 14 yards. And what did Matt Eberflus, the defensive coordinator of Missouri, tell us about Keller? Is he streaky? 
And we've got to do something to keep him out of his rhythm. And right now, the 2006 Scout Team Player of the Year for the University of Nebraska is playing pretty well with the first unit. Cody Glenn, the big back, a junior out of Rusk, Texas, 6 feet 230. Number 34 checks into the lineup as the eye back. Keller got a man open and overthrew it. Swift had the position on Brown, but the ball was just thrown way too tall. And he was running out of space, and I think Keller just overthrew that one on purpose. Chavis was the guy who was coming with pressure again. You know, we have not seen from Nebraska as they bring in their four or five wide receiver set. We have not seen many draws, quarterback draws, anything like that yet. Well, they go with a pitch to Lucky. Lucky turns the corner, tries to, avoids one tackler. And then let's see, forward progress. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds just above the 25 yard line. And when teams get ready to play Nebraska, this is what they talk about with the Bill Callahan run game. Trying to outflank you. You saw that kind of bunch receiver tight end H back set up there to the top. Those become almost like student body left blockers. Instead of pulling offensive linemen, you have faster guys out in front of the running back. Garrett did an outstanding job of forcing him out of bounds because now it is third down and they need six yards for the first. This is the tenth play of the drive for the Huskers. Makes it to Lucky, now throws it to him. 25 20, 15 10, shoved out of bounds. It's going to be first down and goal for Nebraska. William Moore on the tackle after a gain of 15. When you have a guy like Marlon Lucky who can catch the ball this well out of the backfield, when you go to fake and he's going to block, all of these guys lose him, and then he just continues. It's almost impossible. To, to guard that because you lose him in the wash you think he's going into block first and goal the ball squarely on the 10 yard line pressure gonna be sacked at the 19 yard line Van Alexander with the first sack of the night by the Tigers and how timely is that we'll see well this is a missed blocking assignment Van Alexander number five as he goes in the left guard never came off of his block. Jacob Hickman did not see him coming. The center tried to bang him off, and Hickman just never saw him. That's a missed assignment. Coach Callahan looks up at the clock. About to hit two and a half minutes. Left until halftime. Play clock is down to three, down to two, down to one. I think they got a delay of game. They do. Boy, boy, boy. First to sack and now a five-yard penalty for five delay yard. of the game. Second and they had a first and goal at the 10-yard line. This is going to move them back to the 24. These are the things that drive coaching staffs absolutely nuts. Well, they're in a silent snap count. And the center, Byford, Keller's calling for it, lifts his foot, and Byford never saw him lift it until the last second. Keller was picking that foot up, saying, snap it, and then the <laughs> offensive linemen go on movement, and Byford didn't have his head between his legs. So actually, they have moved the ball back to the 22. Keller sets in the pocket, has good protection, throws it, incomplete. Purify was the intended receiver. He didn't pick it up that quickly, but the ball was thrown behind him also. Yeah. I think it was a combination of the two. Purify yeah. didn't get his yeah. head around fast enough, and Keller overthrew that to the outside. If anything, you want to underthrow that to the inside so when the receiver comes out of his break, he can make a play on it. Never found it. I don't know if he could have made a play on that ball. No, I, I don't know. Anyway. Looking back in that direction, you're also looking into a huge bank of lights. Third down. Third down and goal, Nebraska. They got them spread out all over the place. Five receivers set. He is hit as he throws. It'll be incomplete. Ziggy Hood. Well, Bill Callahan decided to go for a touchdown there. They ran five vertical, and it just took way too long. In a game where you're at 
17 3 I can see why he's thinking touchdown because you're not going to win this game with field goals not the way that Missouri is playing this game and Ziggy Hood who battled some injuries last year I thought they may try to cut this distance in half Henry will attempt a 40 yard field goal plenty of distance and he's got it now let's see if they say officially 39 or 40 because it was a tweener. Anyway, the most important thing for Nebraska fans is they got three more points. 151 left until halftime. Missouri 17 and the Cornhuskers 6. So it's 17 to 6. The Missouri Tigers scoring on the first two possessions they had of the ball game a 12 play and then an 11 play drive since then some nice adjustments on the part of the Cornhuskers they have added a couple of field goals but they've been unable to get it into the end zone so that's the reason for the 17 to 6 score Macklin the deep man Kunatic will kick it off for Nebraska and Macklin will return it from the four. Macklin running hard out to the 30 now the 31 yard line and let's check in again with Reese Davis Reese Ryan coming up on the Pontiac performance halftime report Stanford guts US USC and continues to shake up the top 10 the Gators are answering their gut check on the Bayou and the gutty young Sooners come up with a win in the Red River rivalry we'll break it all down for you Mark and Lou are here we'll see you in just a little bit. OK Reese we look forward to it. Hey, this has been a heck of a day for tight ends in that uh, Red River rivalry. Oh, man. Those tight ends for both teams played extremely well. We're seeing two really good ones here tonight. Yeah, I really liked your Michael Finley from Texas. He, he runs so well in the middle of the field for them. Daniel says, hey, I'm going to put it on my hip and run, and he gets as much as he can and then steps out of bounds. And Brandenburg is the man who will be credited with forcing him out of bounds. And here's the beauty for Missouri. He's slowed down quite a bit in the last two drives, but with two timeouts, you can make play calls like that. And you have such a heady quarterback get over to the sideline, get out of bounds, but they are always in the hurry up. They're always in the no huddle. So there's no such thing as a two minute drill for Missouri. It's their base offense. Again, only a three man rush for the Huskers, and one of those guys wow. is a linebacker. And flags are going to come down, and again, it's going to be on Bowman. He was just a little bit early in getting to the receiver. And that will cost them a first down and also some distance. That's a number one. That's a spot foul, first down. I don't think you want to give Chase Daniel this much time. Uh, I think maybe try to bring, bring a corner blitz, get a fourth guy walking around, bring him in a, in a gap. I just don't think a three man rush is what you want to be doing right now at this point in the ball game. New line of scrimmage, the 41 yard line. Daniel again from that shotgun formation. Three man rush again. Pass in the flat, underthrown and incomplete. They were looking for William Franklin. That'll stop the clock and give everybody an opportunity to uh, catch their breath. And Chase Daniel needs to step up into the pocket. On a three man rush, the pocket is in front of you. The defensive ends are going to get around the corner. That time he backed up and had to throw off his back foot. He's got to step up into the pocket. And here it looks like they're finally going to bring a little pressure for Nebraska. 18 of 26 for 202 yards and a touchdown tonight for Daniel. Daniel just throws this one away. Octavian again applying pressure for Nebraska. Daniel has, excuse me, Ron, he has a tendency to bail out. And there's plenty of pocket for him to step up. And when he does that, he ends up throwing off of his back foot almost every time. They still got a minute and 22 seconds to work with, but it is a third down. And to hold on to the football, they got to take it to the Nebraska 49 yard line. Haven't gone to a tight end in a while. It's going to be a quarterback draw. First down, 5, 10, and 15, 20 yards more. And Chase Daniel shows I may be 6 feet 230, but I can outrun 
a lot more folks than you think I can. 29 yards on that carry. And this is where you sit there and say, well, you're not going to do a quarterback run. It's third and ten. They're actually going to pull the guard to get up inside. That's Ryan Madison who pulls from the backside. And again, you just don't realize how good a runner Chase Daniel is. You just don't expect it. I think he catches you off guard. He's six foot, 230 pounds. And he can get downhill, and Nebraska has an injured, looks like defensive. Rude was linebacker. coming on the blitz, and I wanted to, to find out from you anyway. And we got a stoppage of play because of the injury to McKeon. But the situation with this offense, you really take Rude kind of out of his normal territory and disciplines because we've only called his name like one time tonight. Yeah, you are definitely, uh, guys like that are not as involved in the game plan. He's coming in and off the field because you're in nickel and dime situations that's, so much. That's right. We need to take a timeout. 115 left until halftime. Missouri continues with an 11 point lead. So we are back a minute and 15 seconds left on the clock and we'll see if Chase Daniel and company can get it into the end zone or at least get points on what most people would think is a not very much time on the clock to get it done. Steps out, throws a safety valve, and that's the tight end Kaufman who is there. And Daniel has two timeouts to work with, but he wants to get this going. This is plenty of time. Two timeouts. You can you can run the ball again. Do a lot of different stuff with those two timeouts. Try to save one in case you have to get your field goal unit out. 52, 51 seconds on the game clock. Pressure in the middle. They throw the middle screen. This is Saunders. Saunders on his feet inside the 10, and he's down to the nine-yard line. It will be first and goal, Missouri Tigers. And Chase Daniel looking to the sideline, wondering if they want a timeout. I don't think they should use it here. But well, they, they need to get going. Yeah, John Bible just whistled it in, yeah, so the clock is running. Oh, they should have gotten this playoff much earlier than this. Well, but they didn't. So let's see if yeah. they still put it in the end zone. Pass caught at the five yard line, incomplete. As soon as it looked as though he had the football, then a big hit coming from behind on Macklin, and he dropped it. So that stops the clock, 27 seconds. Bowman is the man who came up to make the strike on him. Well, and, and you've got plenty of time with two timeouts. You can run the full complement of plays yes. here. Yeah. So it wasn't that big of a deal to waste that time, but if that would have been tackled in bounds, they would have had to use one of those timeouts. Jimmy Jackson, number one, checks into the ball game at tailback, a junior out of Carruthersville, Missouri. That's Saunders who shifts to the bottom of your screen, wide left. Play action, looking, still looking, still looking. A lot of cat and mouse here. In zone, and the ball is caught by Kaufman. They say no, out of bounds, though. What a job to try to get a foot down by Kaufman. And all of the Missouri players looking to the bench to see if Gary Pinkle may use a timeout to try to challenge this. Well, it will be reviewed regardless if he does or not. What excellent body control. Wow. Touchdown. That's touchdown. He didn't put his heel down. What an amazing play by Chase Kaufman. I think this is going to be overturned. It was the fact that he didn't put his heel down. He's got control of the ball and his toes touch and he still doesn't put his heel down unreal John Bible has run down to the 20 yard line at the other end of the field and I know the replay guys don't like to you know <laughs> reverse what you know what happened on the field but he went through <laughs> so much agony to make sure the heel didn't come down Wow <laughs> that was unbelievable and you work on this type of stuff. And of course, when guys make the transition to the next level, they have to learn how to keep two toes from different feet in bounds. But the, the, how do you know to do that? How do you know, I better not put my heel down because that may be out of bounds. This guy could be on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Video <laughs> confirms that the runner uh, receiver did not come down in bounds. It's an incomplete oh, I pass. disagree. I disagree. I think that's a touchdown by Chase Kaufman. And you cannot challenge it once it's already overturned. You cannot challenge it. Or not overturned, but upheld.
I think it's a touchdown. He's got control. He even does have control. Even, There's yeah, no question yeah, about that. Even though he took his left hand off, it never moved in his right hand, and it looked to me like that very clearly. Indisputably, it looked like that he was above. So it's now third down and goal. And they got him spread out all over the field again. Well, now you get Myrick, excuse me, Wyrick moving on the right side. Well, Daniel, uncharacteristically, is getting a little feisty with the referee. Ball start, 79 offense, five yard, third down. It's not that bad to back yourself up a little bit here. You're still well within field goal range, and now you get more vertical stretch well, on I mean, the field. Exactly. Plus the fact you could see that Nebraska, what they were going to drop into, was not necessarily prevent, but we'll put our bodies in front of the goal line. We'll let you catch it in front, but we're not going to let you catch it behind us in the end zone. Yeah, and watch the top three receivers. Wouldn't be shocked if the middle receiver runs some type of post route because now you have the vertical stretch uh, uh, available. So Daniel asked for quiet down at that end of the field. Third down and goal. Here comes pressure. Lobs it for the end zone and it's going to be overthrown and incomplete. Wanted Rucker on the play. Mark that overturned call. Nebraska started starting to get a little offense going and now Missouri Never even looked that way. Had a wide open William Franklin, and Daniel was just looking over to Rucker the entire time, and Bauman came off of him real early. It's going to be a 33 yard attempt by Wolford. And now Nebraska is going to call a timeout, try to ice him. 13 seconds left until halftime. We'll be right back. Mark May with you in the studio. We apologize for our audio issues from Columbia. Missouri just kicked a field goal, but Mark, you believe they should have had a touchdown. The Chase Kaufman catch in the corner of the end zone that was not overturned should have been ruled a score. Absolutely. So the conference will look at this and they'll come back and say that was a touchdown. As it is, Missouri got a field goal. Lou, did you think it should have been called a touchdown as well? No, it's one of those calls. Whatever was made on the field should stand. There wasn't enough evidence to overturn it. Not enough evidence. You didn't see the replay? You see his foot eight times? The green and the ball in his hands? But the heel came down on the line. Is there a rule that says the heel has to be in bounds as well? The toe was clearly in The heel is part of the foot. It is, but the Last time I took kinesiology. But if the toe comes down, that's enough. There's no rule that says your entire foot has to be in bounds, right? So I, we, we, I've got my rule book right here. One thing I have learned, you don't question the officials. Most of the time, <laughs> I, I made it a policy all my life not to bother the officials. They rule the game and you have to live by what they say. Mark, Mark, will, Mark will you reach over and take his temperature? Are you Lou Holtz? Yeah, Who well, are you? But see, see, this is the thing about it, though. That, it bothers you as a coach, but that, that's part of the game. I personally don't like instant replay. Uh, 
because that's all part of the game. You know, little errors here and there, but that's part of it. Well, Marlon Lucky running out the first half for Nebraska. For sure. Callahan just wanting to get to the locker room after Chase Daniel in Missouri put up some offense. And we can hear in the background Ron Franklin finishing up the first half. We apologize again for the audio. <laughs> Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Our score at halftime, Missouri 20 and Nebraska 6. And at Cunningham, when I look back at the first half and see that one team already has 49 snaps, 299 yards, it means Nebraska's defense has been on the field way too much. We go back last week against Iowa State, 102 plays, so they're starting to get tuckered out. You don't want to do that against this bunch. Chase Daniel has been lights out tonight of the 299 yards 276 of those are by Chase Daniel 222 passing 54 rushing we go back and look at his highlights from the first half sensational both in the pass game and the run game you don't expect this out on the goal line but it's just a zone blocking scheme to Daniel for the touchdown he gets Kaufman for the touchdown and this was a big one on a third down on that last drive before they had to settle for the field goal on a third and ten they run a trap play for Chase Daniel I just not sure how you defend him and Ron being that much on the field for Nebraska you are definitely not gonna be able to defend him that way Wolford is about to kick it off if you've missed the first part of the ball game Missouri won the toss and elected to receive to put that Vaunted offense on the field, and they proved why they wanted the football. So the Huskers will get it to open the third quarter. Squibs it on the ground. Grigsby. 20 25 and just short of the 30 yard line. Let's go down to the sideline. Jack Aru. Hey, Ron, I had an interesting conversation with Bill Callahan, and he brought up the point that he felt that maybe the way to change things up for his offense is to go back to the offensive game plan that he used against USC. He said what he's seeing from the defensive side of Missouri reminds him of the USC game. He said in the second half they're going to try and make some quote unquote USC adjustments. 389 passing yards for Sam Keller in that game. So expect them to maybe try some vertical routes here. Well, the ball was not snapped. You could see ball the guard. Started. 70 offense, five yards, first down. Matt Slauson came up out of a stance and was trying to hustle to start his uh, job on the play. And it's going to cost him five yards. Now, let's go back to the beginning of the ball game. Opening drive, Nebraska. They started it exactly the same way. Five yard penalty. Going to be behind the sticks. No. Not, not the way that Missouri is playing on offense. You have to stay on the field. Tigers jumping around on defense and they bring pressure. Ball is stopped. Looked as though the ball was about to come out, but he held on to it. And it's going to be William Moore who will make the tackle. Well, you almost feel like Nebraska at some point. They're so good in their two minute drill. Sam Keller, up to this point in the season, a two minute drill is 81%. He's right around mid 60s in their normal offense. I think a change of pace may help here. And maybe think about going to a no huddle and see if you can find some rhythm that way. Second down, Keller. Steps up into the pocket, has the ball knocked away, and it was Chavis who got a hand on it, and Nebraska very, very fortunate that they did not turn the football over. Um, Chavis over there working against Leiden Murtha, who he's been running by him all day. At some point, you've got to start chipping. Remember when Sam Keller ran away from Chavis earlier? He's just running right by Murtha. The ball is between Chavis' legs. And Sam comes back and there. recovers it. But that's a heck of a play by big number 48. The junior out of Orange, Texas. It's down in the magic triangle. Keller 
steps up, throws the ball well short. Nate Swift is the man that he was intending to pass for, but it was well underthrown. And not that it's deja vu all over again, but they were one, two, three and out on the opening series of the ball game after starting off with a penalty. And that route was there. That route was open. He had Swift coming open on a deep route over to his left and just, just missed through it. Macklin is the deep man for the Tigers. Hanging spiral, and he runs away from it. And it's going to be touched dead at the 37 yard line. Here, a look at the first half stats, as I alluded to. 49 times they snapped the ball in the first half. And now they're saying officially that doesn't go along with the official stats we have on our monitor. Anyway, we'll we'll acquiesce. We'll say, okay, 298 <laughs> rather than 299. And Chase Daniel, 222 yards passing, and the leading rusher with 54 yards as well. That's that amazing. Just, that was that long scramble and stagger. <laughs> he was staggering. A lot of people in these parts watch Chase Daniels' name to start being a part of the Heisman conversation. Well, this is a pretty good stage to start that conversation. Yeah, I think you're right. Quick look in, gonna have the first down. Good for 12 yards on the play. Just raising up, throwing to William Franklin. And uh, William is proving why he is such a difficult man to stay with. Has great speed. Had a touchdown on the very first play of the game last week. And it's just, it's a thing, the pros love him. They cannot wait for him to, to come out, and he will after this year because he's a senior. Daniel, safety valve, and that's Saunders, number 84, and Tommy, a junior out of Kearney, Missouri, is uh, gonna be stopped after a short game. Jack Aroot. Fellas, you heard William Franklin uh, yesterday talk about after he made that catch. He talked to us a little bit comparing Chase Daniels with Brad Smith. He played for both of them. And I loved what he said. He said, when Brad was playing, I was more, and I quote, a blocking receiver. Now I feel like I'm back in high school. I'm a receiving receiver. <laughs> <laughs> he also mentioned the difference that, you know, Brad Smith, a wonderful athlete, played in the NFL now, but always threw a fastball. And he said, Chase Daniel, from the moment he got to campus, knew what touch meant. Look at this. We're going to double or reverse. Macklin, 35, down to the 30. 19 yards. So it looks like Dave Christensen is dialing up the script again. Well, they go back in at halftime, and they look at the script, and they say, what, what worked, what didn't work, what's left on it that we haven't run? And they make the adjustments. Well, you just... <laughs> Chase Daniel was going to go throw a block and then back the way. Smart move behind good the play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good. <laughs> Get out of the way. <laughs> and throws this one long. Complete at the five yard line. Yes. We're going to say out of bounds at the five is Jeremy Macklin. Well, talk about an embarrassment of riches at wide receiver for Missouri. Jeremy Macklin, who's a redshirt freshman, started getting a lot of time because Denario Alexander had broken his wrist. What a nice job. Foot was down, made the catch, but Alexander came back this week. He's going to have a hard time getting this young man out of the lineup. Redshirt freshman out of Kirkwood, Missouri. First and goal, Missouri Tigers. Daniel with an audible at the line of scrimmage. Hands it off, running play, Jackson straight ahead, and Jimmy is going to take it to around the two-and-a-half yard line, Brandenburg. Lance has had a nice game tonight, very physical player out of Overland Park, Kansas. And this is where they would love to have Tony Temple, who hurt his right ankle in the first half, left the field. It sounded like he may told Jack Arute on his way off he'd come back, but he was hobbled pretty good when he was walking off. Brandenburg, we have him officially with six tackles tonight. We mentioned that he had had an outstanding ball game so far. Jackson continues to operate a tailback. They fake it to Jackson. Daniel, touchdown, his second running touchdown, and credit Martin Rucker, the tight end number 82, with a really good block. On the replay, you'll see number 82 getting the job done.
Second rushing touchdown for Daniel. The first one was on a just a zone play where he read his lineman and cut back. That one was on a zone read, pulled the ball, made a move on the defensive end, and then got an excellent block from Rucker on the edge. Wolfert, the extra point is good. So with 11-08 left in the third quarter, our new score, Missouri 27 and Nebraska 6. Touchdown, Daniel. This telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. Ron Franklin, Ed Cunningham, and Jack Aroop coming to you from a jammed house here at Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri. It is called Gold Rush tonight. You see the thousands of gold t-shirts that were passed out for this one tonight. And it truly is a rush of gold, both in the stadium and also on the field, as it has been a gold rush offensively for the Tigers. Great coverage on the kick return team and a tackle made just shy of the 25-yard line. Ron, there are a gaggle of NFL scouts here. And I spoke to a few of them at halftime about all of the special talent offensive guys here from Missouri. What an excellent hit on the kick. Never even saw him coming. And it's, it, it, there, it's been a really physical game from the start. Got a little chippy there for a little while. But it settled into a nice physical ball game. Officials did a nice job of making sure they let the players know that they were in charge and they were not going to allow that. Sam Keller tries to run. It will not be a sack, but he will be stopped after a one-yard gain by Shulak. I'm just talking about all the NFL scouts, and they're, they're just drooling over all of the offensive talent that Missouri has. And one of the guys they're looking at very closely is Martin Rucker. And it's plays like this that are very important for his draft stock. Look how he chases Brandenburg, the linebacker who's out covering him. Daniel sees him and cuts off of that. Those are the little things that scouts are going to look at. It's not just catching the ball. It's what are you doing when the ball's not in your hands. Keller under pressure, throws this one sidearm, gets it out to Lucky. And Lucky breaks the tackle, 35-40. And now they are going to say forward progress is stopped after a gain of 17 yards. So Marlon proving he is not Lucky, that he's just really good. Because that run right there, he just stepped out of the tackle. Well, he had to pick up his game. Became the featured eye back this year. And he has, boat, he has boatloads of talent. There's no question that number five, with the ball in his hand, is a threat. They run it back into the boundary with Lucky. And a pretty good open field tackle right there. It'll be a gain of three. Jack Aroot, what do you got for us? Well, Ron, when you look at the scoreboard and you see that score 27-6, you know that Chase Daniels in the offense accounts for the points. But for a defense that came into this game after a bye week ranked 93rd in the country, when you watch the Missouri defense on the sidelines, they're beginning to get some confidence. They're starting to play with a little bit more reckless abandon. They're starting to grow up. Keller hands it off lucky no place to go and there's a flag down it'll be no play because there was movement along the offensive front Five yards. and when you play defense at a place like Missouri or a place like Texas Tech or a place like Hawaii it is so difficult when your offense remember that four minute drive early in the game was their longest touchdown drive of the year for Missouri and it's unbelievable how many times you're back on the field. It's tough to play defense. I think it was 425, and guess what? The drive that they just scored on was just over four minutes. <laughs> so, you know, they're, yeah, they're taking forever. Yeah. <laughs> Nebraska season high, nine penalties. You know, there are a lot of things that the coaching staff wants you to have a season high in, but not in penalties, obviously. Lucky, good stiff arm, but he's going to run out of territory and is shoved out of bounds by Charles Gaines. Well, he stiff-armed Lorenzo Williams. And they list uh, Lorenzo at 6-1, but he's a short-arm guy, and Lucky got away from him there. Lorenzo, one of the captains on this football team, came in as a defensive end, and he moved him to linebacker. And at 6-1, 295, he's now a nose tackle. Third down. 
Here comes pressure from the backside. Ball is thrown complete to Swift, and Swift will have the first down. He did step out of bounds at the 42, but it's a gain of 13. That time Missouri came out in man press coverage. And that was an excellent job by Swift. He was going one on one on Ricks. He got right to the sticks. A little physical, got his hands, and he didn't push off, but he was just very physical in his route. And Keller threw that ball on time. That is what Keller has been struggling with, is throwing on time. And Chavis, again, was applying some really heavy pressure. Number four again. Oh, nothing doing here. And let's check in again back at the studio with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Ron, what a tremendous game we have going in Baton Rouge. Florida up on LSU 24 21. Jacob Hester plowing into the end zone. They just reviewed it. Touchdown stands. Extra point pending. 27 24, just over a minute to go. And Cincinnati just picked off a Rutgers pass. 28 23. Looks as if the Bearcats are going to stay unbeaten. Okay, that'd be two in a row as far as the loss column for Rutgers. 110 left to go in that one. Second down and 12. We got eight and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Incomplete on the pass, purified the intended receiver. And it seems as though every time Nebraska gains just a little bit of momentum defensively, the Tigers step up and and make something happen. Remember Missouri coming off the of bye week. Jack talking about a defense growing up. They had two weeks to study Nebraska's offense, and it seems like they know what routes are going to be run. Third down. They want to keep this going. They have to go to the 31 and a half yard line. Keller has it picked off at the 20. That is Pig Brown. The only thing that slowed down pick tonight is that wire on the <laughs> side that the red hat was trying to take away from him. Well, the safety Brown just read Keller. Keller locked in. Watch Keller's eyes. He never comes off the right side. Never, never gave the safety a reason to think that he wasn't coming to that side. And picked up a little bit of chance to come under on France because there was another receiver to that side. But you want your safeties when the quarterback telegraphs it to go make a play. And that's the one thing Bill Callahan has been working so hard with Keller on is trying to look safeties off. It, it also makes Pick feel a little better for that 15 yard penalty uh, on Sportsmanlike that he got back in the first half. The one, another sweep. And it's Macklin. Oh, they are pulling out all the stops here in this third quarter, just like they did in the first quarter. And it's going to be another first down, Missouri. Well, we've got a long way to go, but Nebraska has made some plays. Take nothing away from what Missouri has done offensively. It's been spectacular, but Nebraska's had some chances down in Missouri territory. That's a bad pick for your senior to throw. Play action to Woods. All kind of time throws it to the safety valve, and Franklin catches it and just steps out of bounds. He said, "Hey, you know, I don't need to take it. That's hit. right. I don't need to take a hit right here and show how tough I am." <laughs> now, Franklin, one of the guys that they have just found so many ways to use their athletes, from Rucker to Kaufman, who are two different big type body guys, to Franklin. Alexander look at the splits now on the offensive line look how far apart they are complete flags all over the place that's going to be a block in the back at the 35 yard line as Alexander made the catch now they're going to get Jason Ray mm -hmm. Jason a senior out of Porter Oklahoma went to Broken Arrow High School holding number four on the offense all right, 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. You feel like Nebraska needs to make some type of play. And yep, right in the back. You feel like Nebraska needs to make some kind of play. They have not. They brought some pressure in the middle, but they have not brought any type of corner blitz or outside linebacker blitz. 
And I just feel like if you're going to make something happen, you've got to do it with pressure on Daniel. Hopefully he throws it away. Daniel, fade route, far side. There's a tight end again. That's Kaufman. Bowman is a man who was trying to catch him. But when you see Bowman is 6-1, but when you see Kaufman standing side by side with him, both he and Rucker at 6-6, they tower over any defensive back. I am boycotting the term tight end. These guys, <laughs> I mean, he's, he's the receiver into the boundary, and, and they run so well. It's not just that they're big body guys. They, when they get going in their long strides, they can run with these cornerbacks. Macklin about to receive the snap from center. The quarterback has split out wide to the right. Macklin. Gonna run it. Tries to sweep to the left. And as far as that sheet of paper that has 58 uh, scripted another plays, scratch uh, there's another one to scratch <laughs> off. <laughs> I think that's only two scratch offs so far. Yeah. That's not bad out of 58 <laughs> plays. Well, after a tough week that reshuffled the standings, the chase for the Na NASCAR Nextel Cup moves to Talladega. Who could avoid the big one and escape Talladega in position to make a run at the title? The NASCAR Nextel Cup Series continues on ABC tomorrow. Coverage begins 1 Eastern on NASCAR Countdown. Some of you may think Will Farrell won the poll, but it was actually Michael Waltrip. He's got a man open over the middle, throws it and has got it. That is Alexander. 10-5. Touchdown, Missouri. 48 yards on the pass play. And doesn't he have a broken left wrist with a cast on it? That's a pretty nice catch for a guy with a cast on his arm. has started to come up here at uh, Faroe Field, which adds even more credence to what a good throw that was by Daniel. He led him perfectly. Wolford to attempt the extra point. He's got it. And as we prepare to go to break, we have said so many times tonight, Missouri at times makes it look way, way too easy. But all state proud sponsors of college football. Are you in good hands? And ESPN Game Plan. See the most college football every Saturday. To order, call your pay per view provider. And you're not being surprised. That is Whiteman Air Force Base, and that is the B 2 Stealth Bomber. That's uh, the 509th is out there. There are 21 of these bombers there. Uh, all in the world are right there. And it's it is not detectable by radar. Boy, you look at that thing and it's spooky looking. The 509th, and <laughs> supposedly the only time that you can pick them up on radar is when they open the bomb doors, and then it comes across as like what they say, uh, like a popcorn yeah, machine, or like a, a mosquito. Yeah. yeah. If I wanted to pick one of those up, what would that set me back? About a billion two. What if I got the stripped down version? <laughs> That's a billion. <laughs> Andre Jones, nice return as he'll bring it out close to the 30. Here's another look at the uh, at the B-2. Whiteman Air Force Base, 90 miles west of Columbia. The commanding officer, Colonel Garrett Harrensack. Wingspan 172 feet. It hey, Ron? just immediately makes me think of Batman. Hey, Ron? Yes. If it's stealth, how come I can see it? <laughs> Jack, we'll fix that for you real quickly. Okay. <laughs> hey, Jack, Jack, can you put your stealth jacket and shirt on for us for the rest of the broadcast? Lockie breaks it open, breaks it almost into the clear for a huge gainer. He'll take it to the 45. Darnell Terrell is there to make the tackle. It's the first time in this half that we've seen running lanes. Guys in the black shirts have been doing a really nice job. On this very physical offensive line, Lick. Nebraska is very good up front. They're very good zone blockers. You see there, that's a hat on a hat on a hat across, and Marlon Lucky gets inside, but that's really the first true running lane we've seen in the second half. 
Hands it off to Lucky again and goes straight ahead at left tackle. Now it's time for our Aflac trivia question. This week's question, last week Colorado defeated Oklahoma 27 to 24. Who was the last Big 12 North team to defeat the Sooners in the regular season? Wow. Well, it's been so dominant with the South over the North, and I think that's starting to change a little bit with what we saw last week. That's a tough one. I'm going to have to think about that. Wish I had Google up here. I'm going to look for it. <laughs> to exactly what Jack's doing down on the sideline right now. <laughs> Does he have his Blackberry out? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, he has it. He's made it stealth so you can't see it. <laughs> yeah. Alexander is there to make the tackle on that play. It's going to be a third down for, for Nebraska. Well, they're in their base offense and at 34 to 6. I would think they'd be a little more up tempo, but deciding to stick with what they're doing, running a lot of clock here. Right over the middle, complete missed tackle, and that's uh, Maurice Purify on the receiving end. That will move the sticks, and the first down will be uh, recorded at the 42-yard line. And he's a rhythm thrower, so on first and ten, I would expect that they'll throw it again. Let him stay in some type of rhythm. Cody Glenn, number 34, comes into the lineup. Also, Thomas Lawson, the fullback, into the game. And this running play will go for maybe a yard. And that's about it. Baston, Jerron Baston, a sophomore out of Blue Springs, Missouri, there on the tackle. Well, I mentioned earlier how good Nebraska has been in their two-minute offense this year. A little surprised that we're not seeing something. A lot of guys running in and out. They're using a lot of the play clock down to 14, 13 seconds now between each play. Lucky. Good open field tackle. That is Weatherspoon who came up and grabbed him by the ankles. That's about the only place you can hit this young man. And you see him get up and say to Spoon, nice tackle. Well, we met with uh, Sean Weatherspoon yesterday. And then we watched him on film. It was nice to meet him first. He's such a nice young man. You can tell he loves not only playing football, but playing football here at yeah. Missouri. He really enjoys it. But then you put the tape on, and he jumps off the film. He is an unbelievable athlete at 240 pounds. Third down, they need the 32. Got the pass complete, but he threw it short. The receiver cut the route off short, and it's not going to be enough for the first down. Well, you're in four down if you're Nebraska. So Purify is tackled. Uh, now, well, they, actually, they're giving him a generous spot. They are saying about one yard is what he needs. Weatherspoon was the man who made the tackle. And the big personnel has come in for Nebraska. All of those H-backs. Cody Glenn, but I, again, I think this play action and try one of these H-backs down the seam, try to get one here. Lawson, the fullback. He leads it, and boy, they are stacked. He did not make it. I don't think he made it. From where the linesman is running in for the far sideline, he's going to be almost a yard short. And it looks like Van Alexander is the man who came up and closed the hold. He did, and the Tigers hold. We've talked all night long about their offense. Kudos to their defense for a huge stand. We'll be right back. So we are back. Thanks, Reese. 242 left in the third quarter. And Chase Daniel back on offense. Here comes an option play. He's going to hold on to it. Weaves his way for about eight yards. Jack Arup, let's uh, get a report from you on Tony Temple. Well, we've confirmed that it is a sprain of the left ankle. And, guys, they really, they said that he could come back, but when you look at the score, why bother at this point? Start the healing process now, right? Martin Rutger 
is lined up behind the center. The quarterback is split way, way to the left side. Rucker's going to run the football, and he will pick up the first down. Nothing aesthetically to write home about, but it is enough for the first down on the short yardage play. You know, earlier we showed Gary Pinkle meeting with the officials about all the formations. This is this looks like arena football. There's a guard, guard, center. Tackles are lined up out here. As long as they are on the line of scrimmage, there's nothing that says they have to be right next to the seven, guard. Seven people. Yeah. And uh, that's what Dave Christensen said yesterday. He said, my only job is I have to run legal formations. It doesn't matter where they line up. It just has to be legal. Jimmy Jackson gets the handoff, and he will take it for the gain of a couple of yards, and that's it. Earlier we asked the Atlac trivia question, and the question was, last week Colorado defeated Oklahoma. It was the last Big 12 North team to defeat the Sooners in the regular season, and the answer is, what, what's your guess? I think Kansas State maybe. I was going to say Missouri. Steps up, throws it complete. That's going to be another Missouri first down. This time, William Franklin. Not going to ask Jack because I know he's cheated and looked it up <laughs> on the sideline. I got nothing. <laughs> okay, Jack, I'm sorry. I apologize. You would not have cheated. Here's the answer. Nebraska, oh, 2001, yeah. defeated Oklahoma 20 to 10. The year they went on to play in the national championship game. Should have known that. Well, here we're going to come with a reverse. And it's going to be good for about five yards on the play. And here's that ball game in 2001. Number three, Nebraska taking out number two, Oklahoma. Fourth quarter. Nebraska runs a trick play. Crouch. They throw it back to him for the touchdown. Nebraska 20, Oklahoma 10. Crouch would go on to win the Heisman Trophy that year. I was at that game when uh, Nebraska played Miami in the Rose Bowl and Miami was just as good a college team as you could put them up there as one of the best ever but Crouch still could run with those guys he was as fast as anybody Miami had he was a spectacular athlete let me tell you this though I did the broadcast on that ball game at the Rose Bowl and that there was a sea of red out there but on the field there was a sea of orange and, oh, yeah. and green <laughs> and I'll tell you what from the opening kickoff physically they really mashed the Huskers in that ball game, and there was a tight end who's now playing yeah, for the uh, yeah. New York Giants, who was absolutely devastatingly good. And of course, I'm talking about Jeremy Shockey. Well, and Martin Rucker actually from Missouri watched film of Shockey this offseason. Rucker, Rucker still going. He'll take it to the 21-yard line. A Shockey-esque kind of run. You know, I was interested when he talked about the, the people that he picked out to look at on the video. And boy, you couldn't look at a better one as far as a guy who is versatile and does so many different things. And Shockey has always been one of those guys who runs so hard after the catch, and that's exactly what Rucker picked up. He's been doing that all season long. Well, they're standing and putting four fingers in the air because the third period is over. And the Tiger fans who have been disappointed so many times at big ball games here in Columbia, right now they are very satisfied. We'll be right back. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton Hotels. Ron Franklin, Jack Aroot, and Cunningham coming to you from a sold-out house at uh, Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri. And they are, if this game continues this way, going to be beating the drums well into the night as the handoff goes to Derek Washington. And the freshman showing exactly what he can do is a flag is down. Average yards per play in the third quarter. Nebraska 3.7, Missouri 10.5. That's pretty good. Face mask, five yard penalty, number 51 on the defense, five added at the end of the one. So John Bible with the call, and let's go down to the sideline. 
And uh, check in again with Jack Aroot. All right, guys, so how good is Chase Daniel? Well, if you ask his head coach, Gary Pinkle, who's seen more than his share of quarterbacks, remember what he told us yesterday? He said he'd never met a quarterback with the leadership or the intangible qualities that Chase Daniel possesses. He said he's mature, he's dedicated, and so dedicated that on Fridays, he sits in with the offensive staff when they go through the final game preparation and says what he likes and what he doesn't like. <laughs> you know, Jack, the other thing that I'll... I'll finish the story after the play as he keeps it on the ground and gives it back to the freshman. And Washington's going to take it inside the five. How about this as far as being a team guy as a flag comes down and getting the respect of everybody on your club? This little foul number 45 on the offense. Whoa, that's on Kaufman, the tight end. Every day when Chase Daniel walks on the practice field, the coaches said part of his ritual is he walks to every individual offensive lineman and gives him a hug before the practice starts. It's just not smart by Kaufman. But it was funny after Gary Pinkle made the statement about Chase Daniel being the best leader he's ever had at quarterback. A quarterback that Gary Pinkle coached at the University of Washington who went on to pretty good pro career. Chris Chandler called him and yeah. said, uh, really? Best ever? Uh, <laughs> you forgetting, Coach? And, and, and kudos to Coach Pinkle. He said, no, Chris. He's got it. This guy, he's got it. Trust me. This young man's got it. That's Goldsmith who reset in the backfield. And they swing it out to Goldsmith. And he got turned around. And by the time he looked up, he had a defender right on top of him who was uh, Bo Rude. Well, you brought up during the break that uh, you've got to think. Bob Stoops and his crew watching this game who have you know, I was going to say hi and congratulations to uh, coach Stoops on winning that uh, what is always a huge battle in the Cotton Bowl and coach let me tell you something if it looks like Missouri's playing 14 people on offense <laughs> they do and sometimes I think they're playing 15. Well there's a, there's some interesting connections with this offense that I think uh, coach Stoops and coach Venables is deep to coordinator to be able to come up with a good plan. Middle screen, he throws a record. The tight end breaks a tackle, and they try to convert this third down. They're number one in the nation in third down conversions. And I don't know, this is the first third down situation they've had in the uh, in the second half. And for Oklahoma, remember that Mark Mangino and Mike Leach were at Oklahoma when they first got there. And uh, we were talking to Dave Christensen. A lot of the principles of this offense came from Texas Tech and places like Bowling Green. So it's something that the Oklahoma staff is used to seeing. Now they're going to go for the field goal. Wolford will attempt this one from 28 yards away. It's a fake. That's Rucker. And Rucker not only will have the first down, he'll have the Missouri touchdown. Saunders with a good block on the play. So Wolford will attempt the extra point to try to make it a 41 to 6 ball game at the 1252 mark. He did. So we'll take a timeout. The Tiger offense continues to roll. That is now 528 yards on 72 offensive plays. Six. They are a little bit pumped here in Columbia, Missouri, because as I mentioned a little bit earlier in the third quarter, these people have seen their share of disappointments here in Columbia. The big, what has been called the big game, and the Tigers would stumble. Another big game, and they would stumble. Well, tonight there has been no stumble on their part. You know what? Daniel stumbled a little bit on that third and ten run. That <laughs> well, that was the stagger. I said <laughs> it was a run and then a stagger.
return goes to the 34-yard line. Tiefel Tiller on the return. And here's our ESPNU All-State Standings Review. LSU, 128-24. SC, in case you missed it, has been upset by Stanford. Cal had a bye. Ohio State won. That's an impressive win on the road at West Lafayette, 23-7. Wisconsin lost to Illinois. South Florida had uh, quite a battle there for a while with the Florida Atlantic, but they won it. But BC won. Kentucky lost to Carolina. Florida lost to LSU. And uh, Oklahoma defeated Texas 28-21 earlier today. Taylor's pass. He's being hit as he threw it, and it's dropped by Sean Hill, the H-back. Well, if you look at the top ten two weeks in a row, last week five of the top ten lost. This week, four of the top ten lost. That's nine top ten losses in two weeks. Is that parody or is that <laughs> unbelievable? Or is that just people picking teams that and maybe don't deserve to be there? And now the debate becomes who goes to number two. I say Ohio State. I, I'm with you. I, no, listen, Cal, sorry you're idle, but you go into West Lafayette the way Purdue and Curtis yeah. Painter was playing and yeah. hold them to seven. I think Ohio State has to jump over Cal and go to number two. Pitch back goes to Lucky. Hey guys, what about the beast of the East, South Florida? Well, Where think, do they end up? Well, I mean, it's attrition now, Jack, and we've seen this happen time and time again in college football. When teams start moving up early enough in the season before it really susses itself out, teams like that can jump up. They listen, they didn't exactly blow out Florida Atlantic today, so that may help them, but I think attrition that yes, yeah, South Florida goes to five or four. Lucky comes out. Cody Glenn checks in at the tailback spot. Ball is thrown. Safety valve pass. Yep, he got a foot down. And that'll be uh, Danny Erickson, who's a real speed guy. He was the safety valve in that play. And this is the time of year where you always start doing these guys beat these guys who beat these guys. And if you look at South Florida, they beat Auburn, who then went to beat Florida. Yeah, they didn't exactly blow out Florida Atlantic. Florida Atlantic had a big win against Minnesota, who doesn't look great. But now, look at what Illinois did today against Wisconsin, and Missouri beat Illinois in that Handled tough it. game. Sure Absolutely. Did. Sure did. Keller rolls the pocket, steps up and wants to throw back over the middle, has it complete at the 45-yard line, and that's Hardy. Brent's Hardy, and he'll be stopped after a gain of 12 yards in the play in a first down. And Jack, can you add to this discussion? Well, sir? yeah, I had a long conversation with Bill Callahan before the game, and that's exactly what we were talking about is the big upsets last week. And he agreed, and we both agreed, the consensus of opinion, 85 scholarships and the plethora of coverage that exists for college football these days. He said you no longer have the top programs just hiding players or taking players so that they don't play for someone else. But he said something interesting. It's not just TV coverage. He said extensive Internet coverage gets you noticed. Hmm. Interesting. Third and five, Jack. South Florida, I have seen play four times this year. If you go back 10 or 15 years ago before ESPN expanded, we have all the channels, ESPNU, ESPN Classic, because I catch a lot of games now, those instant classic games, I catch them all the time, middle of the week to catch up on teams I may not have seen. I'll TiVo a bunch of those games and catch them. And it's exactly right. You get to see more places, and that's advertising to 14, 15 year old high school yeah. kids. Yeah, there's no question. Plus, the fact those Florida schools, how many are they taking away from Florida, Florida State, and the University of Florida? Second down and 10. Right over the middle, throws the ball quickly, and a hit is made immediately. Nice defensive play by Alexander, who is right there on top of the play defensively. You know, it's funny we all think, well, how did Central Florida and South Florida, how did they get good? We all seem to forget that when Bobby Bowden left West Virginia to go to Florida State, it wasn't exactly a powerhouse program. No I question. mean, they were in, they were deep, deep buried when Bobby got there. And he, all of a sudden, we all think because it's been so long under Bobby, they've been successful, that it's always been that way. And it hasn't. Third down. Here comes pressure from the Tigers. Oh, they knocked Keller down before he got the pass away. And it just wobbled helplessly to the turf at the 37. Lorenzo Williams will get credit along with Ziggy Hood on the hit. 
Well, when we came into this ball game, all of the talk was about the offenses because both defenses were suspect at best. Well, Nebraska has been racked up for 527 yards. <laughs> From salt to the wood. Oh, God. That's pretty good. That's really animated, guys. Yeah. And Nebraska only has 249 <laughs> yards of total offense. Hats off to Matt Eberflus, the defensive coordinator, and his staff for two weeks of preparation that has paid off. Wobbly spiral. Nobody back deep and now takes a huge Nebraska bounce. They're going to touch this thing dead at the two yard line. So let's take a break. 41 to 6 with 10 23 left in our ball game. It is all Tigers. Tonight's Good Hands flashback presented by Allstate. Let's go back to 1990. The ball is kicked. Matt Davis catches the ball after it was kicked. We'll, we'll check the play right there and make sure they don't get caught for a safety. But the gentleman who made that miraculous catch after it was kicked and sent the game into overtime is this gentleman right here. <laughs> it, you're still talking about it. You're, it's still a famous, it's a big time in your life. Yeah, it was. It was, it was a great play. And, you know, it was just one play in the midst of a long season. And it was a national championship se season, which is what I think made that play grow and become, you know, whatever it is today. Uh, it grew into that because we went on and went undefeated and sent Tom Osborne out of champion. So. I, I, the biggest question I've always wondered, did you catch it? <laughs> if you there was it? instant replay <laughs> like we have today, would it have been ruled complete or incomplete? You know, I don't know. I, I think it would have been ruled complete because it was called a completion on the and field. Wouldn't have so it would have been hard to, I think, overturn it. But, but also, you know, the kick. Is that something that, that could have been reviewed? The kick is that Legals. legal to I don't try know to if keep it could it have alive. Been reviewed, but that's the thing that stuck out in my mind. That uh, you know, obviously kicking the ball is illegal and should have canceled the play. They throw a completed pass. Good heavens! The tight end again, Kaufman is. They're unconscious offensively, are they not? Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, I'm really impressed with Chase Daniel tonight, guys. And you know, we knew they had a good offense coming into this game, but I mean, he's a surgeon. With yeah. the football at the quarterback position they have weapons and they use them well they spread you out and and really they're doing obviously anything they want to do tonight against the black shirt defense you, you do radio now for Nebraska so you've seen right. them a bunch what is going on defensively I mean they've struggled all year they gave up a ton of yards in the air to ball state they haven't had a chance here tonight what's going on with them defensively well you know I think it's a chemistry thing I think if you look at the talent across the board for Nebraska defensively they're not that bad there are teams that I think have lesser talent on defense around the country that play better defense than Nebraska is right now. It's a chemistry issue. I don't think they they play well together. And right now I don't think they believe in each other. I don't know that they believe in the system and it really shows they don't play together. You don't see the emotion. You don't see the fire that you have to have when you go on the road in college football. It's such a game of emotion and, and momentum. As we know you have to go out there and play together. And you haven't seen them jumping around a lot tonight. You know when somebody makes a play they haven't made a lot of plays but at the same time when they have you don't see a lot of emotion out of them either. Matt let me ask you this you know this ball club extremely well being around them on a on a consistent basis. You know what's this going to do to Nebraska tonight. This is not just a loss. This game has gone beyond behind the woodshed as the expression goes. Sure. Uh, you know it's going to be an ugly week in Nebraska for sure. And. And uh, you know this is the fourth year for Bill Callahan here in Nebraska and expectations are high and you know expectations are high around the program and I have high expectations and I won't apologize for having high expectations for the program. And uh, so it's going to be a long week for sure. They go home Nebraska's at home the next two weeks puts a lot of pressure on the team to go home and take care of home field. But obviously some things need to change because right now this isn't the way Nebraska football is supposed to be playing and. You know they're a field goal away from losing to Ball State. Iowa State has a 10 point lead in Lincoln last week and I don't know if Iowa State's going to win another game this year. So you know there are there are a lot of issues right now things that are going to need to be addressed and there's going to be some questions asked this week that are going to need to be answered. Going back.
to those mid 90s and, and Bill Callahan has a lot to live up to from what you guys did 94 95 championships sure. you guys win it share it with Michigan in 97 10 years removed from the catch because without that you guys don't win the national championship that year right Michigan went undefeated won the Rose Bowl you guys go and play in the Orange Bowl has it do you realize how big that was now when you look back on it because I'm sure it was just keep playing we've got another game next week but has it settled in what that play meant to your team yeah I think by now it has I just can't believe you know 10 years later how much it's still shown on TV and and how much I'm asked about it and Nebraska fans are nuts obviously and they, they're passionate about they're passionate about their football team and you know I live in Nebraska still and you know I don't go more than a couple of days ever without talking about that play I bet, I bet that's and, true. and so you know it's that's still surprising to me and and you know here we are 10 years later and program I just can't believe how much has changed in a decade and where we are today yes yeah, I was going to ask you how many catches did you have your best year at Nebraska uh, I think around 35. How many would you have in this offense? That's a great <laughs> question. I've been asked that a few times too. I would What's love. I'd, I'd like to play just one game in this offense. That'd be fun. Missouri'd be fun to play for too as a wide receiver. So uh, it would have been fun to play in, in a you know more of a passing attack. But at the same time, when we did throw it, we were pretty effective because play action was really effective with with the rushing attack that we had. Matt, you bring up an interesting point for young people sitting at home tonight. Between the two teams, the Missouri offense. There are a lot of 16 and 17 year olds sitting there saying wow that might be kind of fun to participate and be a part of you know. Oh absolutely and as, as devastating as this may be for Nebraska tonight. This is a national game for Missouri. They're undefeated. They're going to Oklahoma next week. I mean what a jump start for their program. A guy like Chase Daniel they, they have skilled position guys making plays all over the place. This is big for their program for recruiting for everything. Uh, you know they see an opportunity now a vulnerable Big 12 North division that they think they can go get this year and get a lot of momentum for years to come here in Missouri. Well and the Big 12 North now competitive with the South. I mean that you have to take a time out. I'm sorry. Don't mean to interrupt you guys. Thank you for coming by. <laughs> hey, you got to pay for the for your salary here. <laughs> thanks, in Jackson. So we'll take a time out. 41 to 6 our score remains. All Tigers. ESPN's College Football Prime Time is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. 531 left in the ball game. 480 yards by Brad Smith against Nebraska 2005. And tonight, Chris Daniel, Chase Daniel, 473 yards total offense in the ball game. So he is looking for more of a record as that pass is dropped. But my question right now might start to be why Pat. Yeah. No, the, I was going to say the other the chase. other chase. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why he is not coming into the ball game because with this kind of lead and you this kind of situation, it. you certainly don't want to get him banged. No, and we started the discussion with Matt Davison about the Big 12 North coming into this season all of the media that cover the Big 12 had Missouri Nebraska number one number two. Well that's changed tonight drastically. Of course we now know that Kansas may be for real in the North Colorado with a huge win over Oklahoma may be for real. So this is going to be a heck of a battle in the Big 12 North. Well that, that Missouri's plan hit and just came back right into the arms of Missouri. And as the expression goes after a 48 yard punt, sometimes the magic works, sometimes it doesn't. Tonight it's working for the Tigers. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number 20, Charlie Trippi. In a college career that straddled service in World War II, Trippi was the MVP of the 1943 Rose Bowl, won the Maxwell Award, and led Georgia to a perfect season in 1946. IBM getting it done. So we are back. Charlie Trippi, the great one for the Georgia Bulldogs. Well, the Bulldogs could have used someone just like him <laughs> yes. today up in Knoxville. Wow. Good play action here by Keller. Gets it out to Sean Hill, and Hill will be close to the first down. In fact, he will.
pick it up and let's take a look at the list of the greatest 25 so far. Nevers, Reggie Bush, Johnny Rogers, George Gibb, Archie Griffin, and Charlie Trippin. Of course, number two and number one will be announced on New Year's Day on ABC. A little trivia, what do those uh, guys all have in common? They all handle the ball. When are we going to get a linebacker? I'm, I'm, I'm boycotting this list. I think the blue ribbon panel is made up of nothing but ex-quarterbacks, receivers, and running backs. Well, I don't disagree with you. <laughs> Pass thrown complete just short of the first down. And let's go down to Jackaroo, Jack. When we talked to the players, I think they all agreed that we're looking at a kinder, gentler Gary Pinkle. When we asked Gary about it, he even admitted it. He said maybe things changed a couple of years ago. It really maybe changed when he decided to trust his players. You know what? One of the things he does now is he has a council of seniors that he throws things at, not literally, but ideas. And they either say, hey, it's good or bad. Yeah, he, he gets together with his seniors every year and he has four or five things that He's thought that things that should start happening in the program and he sits down with the seniors and says all right Here's what I think. What do you guys think? And he said, you know, the kids are a lot different today than they were when he started his career Coaching under Don James at Kent State and then went with coach James to the University of Washington Where it was yes, sir. No, sir. No matter what you wanted to do now kids want to know why they're doing it They want ownership of what's being done and you know the one thing that coach Pinkle said that was interesting. I said, you know, we've given them this ownership We've communicated with them they never ask to work less hard or have less discipline. They still want the discipline and the work hard. They just want to know why they're doing it. Here's what's happened in the Big 12 today. Kansas defeated Kansas State, coming from behind to do so. Texas falling to Oklahoma, number 10 against number 19. Colorado winning big at Baylor. Iowa State loses on the South Plain at Texas Tech, which where we will be next week. The team that they will face off against next Saturday is the team that had to come from way behind Texas A&M to win at home over Oklahoma State, 24 to 23. A penalty flag as we take a look at the pass it 21 defense. That's foul first down as we look at the Big 12 North standings Missouri of course one of the favorites coming into the season what an excellent job Dan Hawkins and his staff have done but what about Mark Mangino they hadn't really played anybody until today and we were watching that young quarterback Todd Reese and I think he's got a player and I think they're going to compete Let me tell you something. You, when you look at the North why are they having so much success good play at quarterback I mean, you look at team after team after team you watch Bradford today for Oklahoma, mm -hmm. you know, red shirt freshman. Hawkins, a freshman. Reese just blows me away. He's from a school just north of Austin, Texas. Yeah. On a ball right there, almost uh, intercepted. But the bottom line is, when you're getting that kind of good, consistent play out of your quarterbacks, and your offenses are far, far more efficient, and it sure gives you some help. That has not been the case with the teams in the world. Not, yeah, not well, in recent years. Well, and you look down at the South at all the great quarterbacks that came out of there through that time. Major Applewhite. I mean, there were so many. Vince Young, uh, he kind of jumps to the top of the list, and that's exactly why the South was dominant. There's no secret. Gary Pinkle said that right now because Chase Daniels, a junior, they're out looking hard trying to get some kids, some top-level quarterbacks to come in. Pass in and out of the hands of Todd Peterson. Let's go down to the sideline again in Jackaroo. Jack? Well, fellas, I agree with you. Great quarterback play, but one of the things that's happened over the last five to six years is infrastructure for those schools in the Big 12 North. Let's face it, some of them, when it first started, were really behind the curve. Just look at what's happened here at Missouri. Look at what's happened at some of the other facilities. They now can compete with the Big 12 South in terms of what they have to offer the, offer the student athlete. Yep, they built a brand new facility just opened last year at Missouri that houses a gigantic weight room for all sports in the middle with meeting rooms and everything else. It's a beautiful facility. Third down and 10. Just going to throw this one out to Cody Glenn. And Cody is going to take it inside the 45 to around the 43. Bridger is there to make the stackle for, uh, for Missouri. Yeah, next week on the South Plains uh, in Lubbock, I, I think my biggest question is, will Coach Leach 
throw the ball 85 or 75 <laughs> times. Well, I'm, I'm excited to see that young uh, receiver Crabtree. Yeah, I am too. Unbelievable. It, you know what? And that will be because of the rivalry between those two schools. Yeah, they don't like uh, each other very much. <laughs> that will be heated from the get go. Titchener gets the punt away. And it's down just inside the 10 yard line. Well, Missouri football here are the last time situations. Home sellout 2003. Highest ranking since 1998. Won the conference title 1969. And beat Nebraska's three straight at home 1957. And Chase Patton is coming to the ball game, so draw a line. Under the activities by Chase Daniel tonight, he was simply magnificent. This young man, a junior out of uh, Columbia, right here. Well, the last time uh, Missouri won a conference title was 1969. Let's uh, take a look at the timeline. Uh, Richard Nixon is sworn in as president. Uh, on July the 16th, Apollo 11, the first manned mission to land on the moon. You know, Woodstock. Jack will tell us more about that. <laughs> and in October of 69, the Miracle Mets defeated the Orioles to win their first World Series. And I'm sure you remember where you were for every one of those events. I was in my mom most of that time. <laughs> I was <laughs> born in August of 69, so <laughs> I'm sure she was telling me about it. Well, this pass is just thrown away. That'll stop the clock with 210 remaining. I want to know who Jack's favorite act was at Woodstock. He shared with us. Country Joe and the Fish was the only one that I remember. <laughs> I, I that, don't even know who Country Joe and the Fish are. Were they on that, some side Remember, stage? don't take the brown acid. <laughs> Did not Janis Joplin, <laughs> Jimi Hendrix, Cowboy? Who Country, was it? Country Joe and the Fish. Uh, I'll have to go look them up. Go, go to your Google. Yeah, yeah. That was Earl Goldsmith, the young running back who made the carry. This clock is uh, now showing 2:02 to play. Chase Daniel. Relaxing on the sideline. Boy, Missouri has 31 first downs, passing yardage 410, and they have run 83 plays. And Jack, how many plays did Nebraska have their defense on the field for last week? 102. That's wow. what I thought. So in in two weeks, that's 185 plays for a defensive unit. That is a lot. Well, last week, a lot of it had to do with penalties and turnovers by the offense that kept them on the field. Today was just, they ran into Full a buzzsaw. Start, 43 offense, five yards, first down. Well, we talked about what a night he has. Let's look at a package on Chase Daniel. Well, the part of the game, I think, that will throw people off is that he is very good with the ball in his hands. He doesn't have elite speed, but he's got plenty of speed, and he can move in the open field, and he throws you know, it was we were talking to uh, Franklin, the receiver yesterday. He just understands touch. He understands how to throw a catchable ball. He can throw the heater if he has to. But he just understands this game. We give a lot of credit to Todd Dodge, his high school coach, who taught him not just a lot about football, but off the field everything. Literally, he taught him how to act like a quarterback, how to walk like a quarterback, how to talk like a quarterback, and also how to play it. And as far as innate abilities chase daniel already had a bunch of that now every talk show in this part of the world and around when they talk about the young man people still call him daniels it is daniel there's only chase one of daniel them. that's right only one of them Well, they got the play off, thus they still do not have a delay of game penalty this year, and that'll be the final play. And listen to the crowd, the students 
And on this side, the alumni standing and applauding and cheering. Not just a victory, a big victory. And it's a big ball game that Missouri didn't flop in. They stood up for exactly what their Billy the the gave them yes. coming in. And last year they started 5-0. and This year 5-0. and Last year they stumbled home at 8-5. I don't get a feeling that's going to happen to Missouri this year. Uh, I totally agree with you. Once again, our final score, Missouri 41 and Nebraska 6. For more on tonight's game, tune in to ESPN News for a post-game extra. For Ed Cunningham and Jack Aroop, I'm Ron Franklin saying so long, everybody, from Columbia, Missouri. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now let's join John but Butchergaros and Neil Everett for Sports Center. And John, I apologize.